Oh, yeah. <laughs> we are mucus free. 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 <laughs> Greetings, brothers and sisters, and welcome to the Mucus Free Life Podcast. And we have a really, really exciting show for you today. A wonderful, wonderful guest, uh, which I'm very excited to bring out momentarily. But before that, how you doing? Just, uh, just uh, on here yesterday with Brother Air talking about the, doing, doing our our annual Thanks Killing uh, uh, program, and uh, there's a lot of people that contributed to their their own deaths, unfortunately, yesterday with a good bit of uh, all the what's all the turkey and candy yams and this and that and all the the stuff that people just stuff their stomach with uh just pus forming food pus and mucus forming foods and so what we always do is uh, we the mucus free community many of us fast on thanks killing and in during this time period and this is i find this just to be a good time period to fast in general because there's so much uh, the vibration is just so weird right now just just the way the way people uh, the way people act, the behavior, because people are eating so much worse and it's like their behavior it just gets worse and worse. And it's just so this is a, an excellent time, I find, to actually fast and basically do diametrically opposed to whatever <laughs> what everybody else is doing, which is because it's like you got thanks killing. And then you're right into the holiday season with all the various holidays in December. And then you get through to that. And then New Year's, I mean, and each one is an excuse to get messed up in a little different way. So, so we're going to, we're going to say thanks and get messed up on Thanksgiving. And then on Black Friday, I, I, I ought to look and see how, what the, how many people got trampled today. That was something we used to do is look at the, the body count because uh, people would get killed every year trying to get into these malls and you know wherever to try to be able to uh to do that kind of thing and get a get a deal i guess a lot of those deals are online now but that is uh so that was i guess that's yesterday today then uh you know christmas the christmas at time you you know say a prayer and eat a bunch of food then go get drunk on a few days later at new year's and that's the that's how it goes that's that's how we roll so we like to do the opposite of that and of course if you're not in a position to to fast and that kind of thing don't worry about that we promote the transition diet get on the transition diet start applying the principles just start cleaning yourself out how you know just just you gotta just get started you just start eating better start cleaning yourself out and things are going to go a lot better for you in the long run. I uh, want to share something really uh, real quick for you here. And let me, this is, oh, I got to bring it up. Uh, so a couple few days ago, I finally finished with uh, the, here we go. This is the uh, Fire Music Project. Fire, fire music project live.com and uh, finally finished this uh, this website is where we uh, me and brother airs band I'm gonna put the link in the uh, chat right now and I invite you to come and check it out we got some media on here some uh, some music video videos talks a little bit about the band all of that good stuff uh, so yeah come on over check it out and uh, let's see can't oh no oh well but uh yeah come come on over check it out I'm not sure where the okay there we go all right that was that's still still sharing the sharing the wrong thing here 
Okay. Add the screen. There we go. Sorry about that. <laughs> Just getting all that. But yeah, so this is what the website looks like. And yeah, you know, this music physiological liberation. That's what me and Brother Air has been doing for 20 years, making music that's inspired by lifestyle, inspired by cleaning yourself up. As we say, we're we're ending clean that ass 2021 and moving into clean that ass 2022. And so, yeah, this is this is the uh, this is the time. And, and so in this t- we really this is the time when we got to really get into the artistry, bring that into the culture. And 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 that's something that, that I've seen has kind of been missing. I mean, we try to contribute, but we're going to just try to push it a little bit more uh, because you got to have art that goes along with. The, uh, any serious movement, any serious cultural movement, you got to have the art with it. And so that's uh, something we're trying to bring to the table. And we have a, a bunch of great artists in the community. We got a great artist that's going to be on the, uh, 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 the show today momentarily. So click that link and I invite you to check that out. So, so without any further ado, I would like to introduce you all to Eli Martyr, who is an independent researcher, self-taught natural hygienist, educator, and professional stuntman. And uh, he was uh, played a lot of athletics uh, as he was coming up, a uh, strong foundation in gymnastics, martial arts, and other sports, and has developed a lifelong interest in health. And after obtaining a degree in kinesiology and health sciences at York University, Eli became unsatisfied with what the university had taught him, took his education into his own hands, his real education. And uh, and he is a stuntman and actor. And uh, he's been in a number of different, a lot of movies, TV shows, things that you have probably seen. You've probably seen him before and did not know (laughs) that that's him so uh without any further ado welcome eli how you doing hey thank you so much for the lovely introduction and the lovely welcome uh i'm i'm doing great yeah i'm I'm doing really well thank you and oh my god so excited to be here so excited to chat with you um i had given my mom a copy of the mucus diet healing system the version obviously that you um uh, that you annotated and you brought to the uh to the public sphere so uh thank you so much <laughs> you, i think you really helped uh, my mom broaden her broaden her understanding and yeah just introduce her to to these concepts that are so important for life as we're living it now on planet earth with all of these Nonsense. I'm already going off here. Uh, all of these uh, kind of dietary distractions and superstitions and the lies and the delusions and just just on and on it goes. So it's, you know, your content, your channel, it's a breath of fresh air. And uh, so I guess I just want to first of all, thank you so much for, for everything that you do. Yeah, well, thank you for those kind words. Thanks for g- getting the uh, message out, sharing the mucus is die with your your mom and that's uh you know this is this is like hard work just putting this information as you know putting this information out there just oh, it's yeah. like putting that line in the sand and saying look everything that we're being taught in the mainstream about diet and health and healing is wrong and yeah. here's what we found here's this good news it's it's actually good news but you get beat down like it's like you uh like it's terrible you know it's like well this is actually good news we we can heal help people heal themselves sorry (laughs) 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 so uh and uh and your pro uh yeah your uh site is the uh, free melon society Yes. And, uh, yes, that's right. Okay. And so uh, here, let me do a little, a little screen. There we go. A little screen hey, share. Hey, there I am. Yeah. So this is uh yeah. He's got a lot of great stuff on here. Definitely check, check him out on here. Follow him. Also, <laughs> while we were on here, I had a couple of your your action reel, so people know. Oh, cool. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. So like, uh, well, as a, as a stunt guy, so as you guys know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a professional stunt man. And so, yeah, we, we need to, especially in the initial stages, you know, be responsible for putting together a reel, demo reel of just all the actions, all the physical actions that you're capable of doing and you put them together and then you submit them to coordinators in your city, wherever it is that you reside. And so, and yeah, this was well, actually this channel, my, my YouTube channel, Free Melon Society was originally just a personal channel where I would upload things like this, that I only mm. use this demo reel footage for coordinators. But then after a while, then uh, I, I had a very small following and it, it was good because it gave a little bit of a head start in rebranding the channel as something that was actually constructive for the public mm. you know kind of the obligation kind of started getting hit with that obligation that i need to do something about all of these things that i'm reading all this understanding that i've to, that i've come to um uh, come to take on and uh so yeah and that evolved into into the channel as it is today this was uh, yeah <laughs> do a, a lot of video game motion capture as well <laughs> Uh, this is uh, stuff with Ubisoft that you're seeing right right here. So uh, for if you guys are into video games and you've played a lot of Ubisoft games, you've you've probably killed me hundreds and thousands of times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, you had what was this? Uh, this, uh, this other one. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You, you know what I what I really love about this about this job is that it allowed you to have experiences that you would under no circumstance ever ever in your life get with any other occupation any other job any other thing that you could do like there's just stuff that you you get to do that you'll ah oh, geez you get so many interesting experiences like you know as you're seeing here you know that first mm. clip of you know, we uh jumping out of an out of an airplane right. not a real airplane right. It wasn't a real airplane, but it was a makeshift of an airplane. Yeah, right, right. Like 50 or 60 feet up above the ground and rappelling yeah. out of it and pretend you're shooting a gun. Like, I mean, you'll never get to do this. You know? No. <laughs> Unless you're in the military or something. Unless you're, yeah, but you're in the military area or the movies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, I mean, you'll never get to do it under safer conditions without people yeah. firing live ammo back at you. Right. right. So right, stuff right. like that, it's, you know. I've always, I guess I've always, I'm a Leo, so there's that part of me that enjoys the spotlight. As I say that, I'm, I'm performing on stage here. Um, yeah, yeah it just <laughs> likes entertaining people. Uh, I just, I, I like to, you know, I've always had a knack for that. Or well, I don't know if I've had a knack for it, but I enjoy doing it. <laughs> Whether I'm good yeah. at it or not, that's to be, uh, that's to be debated. But yeah. So how, so how did you th first that, get uh, into that? How did you first get into uh, to acting and and, mm. and stunt? Because most people, if you, you can't go to school, or maybe you can't. Or like like I want to be a yeah. stunt man when I grow up. You know, that definitely seems like a real niche type of uh, type yeah. of thing. So how, how did you get to that? Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. Well, I mean, I was I was training for my career before I even knew it existed. Really, uh, as a kid, I was really into well my father exposed me to a lot of comic books so i got inspired by heroes like spider-man and daredevil and captain america all those guys uh got exposed to a lot of actors as well and then when you're a kid and you're impressionable and you're seeing these these guys van damme was one of my first my first real inspirations and there was just something there was something about the freedom of expression with your body that really, really uh, captivated me. You know, I, I was I was really eager to like, oh, I want to be able to uh, not have any fear doing anything physical. Like, I want to mm. have like complete command over my 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 physical body. So that was that was the initial um, impetus that that got me into, well, just general athletics and whatnot. So I started with gymnastics, and that was I, I would call that my foundation, my you know my bedrock. And then I, I went on to gymnastics, oh, sorry, um, martial arts, like Taekwondo and karate. Uh, I did Muay Thai for a number of years. And uh, so a bunch of the martial arts disciplines, all, all the while training my gymnastics. And so that's where I got started. And then, you know, later on, high school, university, I found I, I did like the dramatic arts, particularly in, in high school. You don't really do much drama in university. So in high school, I, I loved um, being on stage, did a lot of stage performances, uh, did, you know, did acting classes and 
in school. Took acting classes outside of school later on in university as well. And then by the time I was done and I got my degree in kinesiology and health sciences, which, which was a subject that was interest, of interest to me, most relevant to what I was, you know, what I was, what is doing mm-hmm. athletically. And so once that was done, I kind of always knew it was my backup plan. My degree was my backup plan. I, <laughs> I kind of uh, pacified my parents as they, as they were a bit reluctant to encourage me to get into the stunt side mm. of, you know, the industry. And they're like, right. yeah, maybe you should go into politics. Maybe you should do this. Maybe you should do that. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, okay, fine, fine. Yeah. Uh, maybe I kind of like, you know, I said, ah, maybe I'll go into athletic therapy or something, which I mm. wouldn't have minded doing. It's just that I really liked the idea of performing uh, in front of the camera. So I, I, so I got my degree. And then once I was done university, I had already got a couple jobs here or there um do it like music videos and whatnot um hooked up with a with an amazing set of guys uh if, if any of them are watching shout out to team 2x uh great great guys stunt guys that did live performances live shows and we also did some work on tv and film as well so i uh so i got some great experience with them and then of course you know getting the odd job here or there on tv and uh, and, and movies and whatnot or I should say not movies yet, but TV, music videos. And then, yeah, mm. once you start to get a couple of movie gigs here or there, then it was just off to the races. And, mm. uh, yeah, and, and that was it. Yeah. And you said you first mm. got uh, some uh, commercials, sort of. Yeah. That you started. Yeah. I, yeah I, my, one of my first uh, big, <laughs> my big commercial was a uh, Lotto 649 commercial. I was one of the one of the happy dancers in in this mm. like in this long series of Lotto six forty nine happy dance commercials, mm. and it was great because <laughs> Lotto kept recutting the commercial the footage that they had. <laughs> so they have a raw database of, of footage, and then right. they just cut it to make new commercials. And so if they do that, they have to pay you again and mm. credit you again as if you've done and you shot the new commercial. So nice. just by doing getting that one audition, I got enough credits to get me into the union in mm. uh, uh, Toronto, which is ACTRA, the, the, the performance union. So I got yeah. in in like, boom, one shot, uh, much to the jealousy and rage of all my uh, of all my peers at the time. <laughs> like, what the hell? You got in with one <laughs> gig? Like, you should take some yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I lucked out of it that way. Yeah. <laughs> And so, so, so tell us, uh, so at what point do you start getting into the advanced diets? Like what, what was your diet before? What did you used to eat? And then what was sort of your path to finding out about the kind of lifestyle that we, that we live? Right. Yeah. So, I mean, for most of I think like, I think like most of us out there, a, a big chunk of our lives was, um, you know, it was not good dietarily speaking. Um, my, yeah, my diet before I went, I went for dairy, actually, no, before I went vegan was, you know, I, I treated my body like, a, like a trash compactor at the back of an amusement park, you know, it, mm. it, it, it's a terrible diet, just awful diet. Uh, so everything goes, you know how it is. I mean, I didn't do, okay, no, I shouldn't say that. I didn't do soda pop, mm. like I didn't do soda pop and chips. Like that, I, that stuff I never really did, but it was and everything go like salt, seasonings, um, you know, uh, everything, meat, oils, combinations of just anything going with anything, you know, awful combinations of food, eating whenever, tons of cereal, tons of milk, just garbage. All right. So no, no surprises there. When I say garbage, I mean it. <laughs> and it was, yeah, so throughout high school, early university, I kept getting plagued with, you know, runny nose, mucus, right? Just tons of mucus all mm-hmm. the time, all the freaking time. And it was annoying. It was really frustrating because I kept setting up the conditions, you know, that, <laughs> that caused that to happen perpetually. And if I, I didn't change anything, so I just kept getting those results. And but I didn't know why at first, so I picked up a couple books. Uh, this is this was kind of like early university, even early high school. 
I was, I would say, uh, not early high school, mid late high school. I was starting to get into the uh, the way the world worked, the, the kind of the conspiratorial nature of how mm. um, how oligarchs and elitists, um, you know, take the uh, take the reins of, of of global finance and all that kind of stuff. So I was getting right. into that pretty early, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. I didn't really start connecting the dots like health wise until yeah later on in in university, and so my first couple steps were to eliminate uh carcasses I, I i realized oh you know i probably shouldn't put dead bodies into my into my system right and once once that light came on then all of a sudden oh man you know i, I started feeling better i started you know less mucus uh less congestion um i i had asthma not i had respiratory problems mm. as a kid Mm -hmm. And they got better. They got better time as I as I grew up, but they never really relented. So, for example, if I were to go for a jog for a 15 minute jog or so, I, I would feel tightness and pain in my chest. And mm -hmm. I there was nothing I, I just figured there was nothing I could do about it. That's just that's just how I am. And wrong. <laughs> I was wrong about mm -hmm. that. It was not how I am. It's because I was abusing my body quite badly. So once I cut out the meat, I started feeling better. And then some more investigation, more investigation. And then, oh, man, okay, the grains, these are these are all processed foods, heavily processed food. Oh, flour products. Oh, my God. Flour does this and this and this and this and this. And just this is a nightmare for my body. Oh, my God, I'm combi I've been combining flour with all this stuff that enzymatically clash with one another. And now this is causing all sorts of mucus and, 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 and metabolic byproducts and waste and congestion. I'm like, oh my God. So I cut out a bunch of these things as well and even more improvement, right? So getting yeah. sick a little bit less often, skin starting to look a little bit better. And so I was vegan for about seven, eight, seven, eight years or so prior to become, prior to doing what I'm doing now, which would be mm. a predominantly almost, almost exclusively fruit-based lifestyle. Mm. Um, got into got into Eric and uh and your work and Eric's work uh pretty early on, uh, on my well before i started actually started uh, doing the fruitarian lifestyle and that was just a huge inspiration um, if there's anybody in the audience listening that hasn't read uh arnold Eric's mucus list diet healing system then you you need to do yourself a service and get on that because it's gonna it, you know the, the book is great it'll it'll change your change your life Give you a new understanding of, of the the very simple principles that that govern health and wellness in the human body and so yeah so i, I did um i was vegan for about seven years i was a pretty clean vegan but still using oils and cooked foods and all that all that mm. kind of stuff but i was pretty good i was pretty good it's just what bothered me is that i wasn't seeing a complete regeneration i wasn't seeing a complete healing of my mm. body i was still getting occasional mucus you know, mucus and nose and a, a bit of wheezing every every once in a while. And I'm just like, oh, but I've cut out all these bad things. What am I doing wrong? And then, of course, the lights came on and uh, and I realized, oh, right. Mm -hmm. Humans, uh, humans are just like every other animal. We have <laughs> a species specific diet. You know, we can't we can't just go. <sighs> indiscriminately processing food into whatever kind of crazy human abstraction we want, put it into our bodies and expect that it's doing us a service. We, we, we just can't do this. And uh, this is not what life intended. Life intended nature, God, call it whatever you want, the divine, the divine intelligence of, of the universe, whatever you want. But that force, that, that creative force that was responsible for designing our physical reality it was it was very intelligent and it was very deliberate in the way that it constructed the, the, the design of organisms and so all organisms seem to be tied through their senses to a to a particular modality of eating and humans humans are no different and so this was just like just such a huge revelation and it made so much sense it just it made so much sense. I, I I found that I was as I was studying, I felt oh my god, oh how could I have been so 
duped. Like it was, it was insulting, you know, borderline <laughs> insulting that I didn't clue this yeah. clue into this earlier. I'm sure you can relate to that. You know, you just yeah. you feel so guilty. It's like, why was beating up my body for all of these years? How how many times did I have to feel the effects of my of my behaviors before I I clued in? Like 800, 8,000 exactly. times. Yeah. You know, it's 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 crazy. Like how how do we not learn? And it's because I, I feel it really is that culture has just is just what it's done is it's normalized disease. It, 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 it tries to convince you that there is nothing you can do in your life to avoid the concomitant life afflictions of colds, flu, cancers later on in life when you're when you're old, whatever, whatever that means, whatever that arbitrary <laughs> distinction means, uh, you know, you just can't avoid this is just how life works, right? Nothing you can do. And, you know, bullcrap. It's absolute bull crap. Um, and yeah, so anyway, anyhow, I don't want to drag on. I know I'm, uh, I know we only have so much time here, but yeah, no, so yeah. I was vegan for a while and then fruitarian. And then, and then of course the health benefits started to accrue. Every, it, my, everything started changing and it was just, it was just overwhelming. And I, uh, and uh, you know, I, I would never go back to the, the old, the old me, uh, for anything. I, I, yeah. It's, uh, it's a it's a very 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 sustainable way to live, clean way to live, healthy way to live, uh, it, perfect immunity. Perfect. It's it just it's just great. You know, it's I'm not saying that you're gonna move mountains as a as a fruitarian. You know, you're not gonna telekinetically levitate uh, trucks or whatnot. Okay, I'm, I'm not going there, but I'm <laughs> saying you know it's a it's a very good practice if you want a, a very very healthy life you know, very, very clean life. So, yeah. 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 Interesting. So how did you deal with sort of as an athlete, you're in, in doing what you do, uh, I would imagine and assume you're around a lot of the, uh, the, the protein religion, the whole, you oh, know, yeah. everything just protein, <laughs> yeah. protein. So how did, how did you kind of <laughs> deal with that as you were just transitioning away from that type of mentality. Yeah. Uh, was that yeah. something that did people give you a hard time about that? Or did you just, and you didn't care? Or how, how did you kind of deal with that? You know what that I, for me personally, that that's not, a, it's not like super exciting. I, I, I just didn't care. You know, <laughs> right. I really yeah. just didn't care. Like, I, I mean, people are going to do whatever. And I, I was already, I was already coming into my own in my research and my understanding and, and kind of like I was saying before, okay, I think the reason that this didn't have much of an effect on me is because the principles that I was, I was absorbing. Well, it, it was just that absorbing principles, unchanging, yeah. immutable principles that, that, that work all the time that never change. You can, you can put your faith into them. You can put absolute confidence in them to, to produce a result all the time right that's just how that's just how natural principles it's kind of like you know ice is or water is always going to be become ice at a certain temperature right at that at that key temperature and it will never not do that right so this is a principle that once you understand you learn you can have faith in it and apply it right. to enhance the quality of your life so there are there are these principles that apply to how health and health and wellness work in an, an organic body so coming online to that yeah i'm gonna go to work and the whole place is filled with you gotta see a set like the stuff that they they give out on set for, <laughs> the craft for service refreshments oh my god yeah. it's it's so funny like you'll we'll be out in the blazing hot just just this year we'll be out in the blazing hot and in in big thick costumes and people are out like gatorade and freezies you know it's 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 almost as if their intention is to dehydrate the crap out of you and make and make everybody sick. Right? Ice cream! Oh my god! Ice cream! Ice cream! Ice mm. cream! Yeah, so, yeah, you, I'm seeing all this around me, and I guess I'd put in enough time uh, correlating those things with how I used to feel, and it's just it just wasn't it was never worth. It. There was no stimulation in the mouth with those kind of obvious landmines that was worth how I would feel. 
or what that would do, or what I knew would do, it would do to my body. And so it was, it was not very difficult. It was not very difficult. You know, it's, it, it's like walking on the street and seeing a bunch of, a bunch of people, um, I don't know, eat, eat wood, like just wood. I don't know. <laughs> would you do it? No, you wouldn't. It's like, ah, that, that, I think I should eat wood. I mean, you're not going to do it just because some other kids are doing it. So yeah, that, that type of thing. It just, that was water off a, off a duck's back for me. Right. So what is your kind of your daily routine in terms of like working out or stretching or what, what kind of things do you do? Yeah. 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 Um, you, I'm doing something every day. Um, uh, but I don't, I don't work out. I don't work out in the classic sense. Like I don't mm. usually dedicate one hour to just completely destroy my body and then wait you know, two days and <laughs> right. destroy my body again. Yeah, yeah. I don't usually do that. I treat, um, I treat my exercise kind of, kind of like play and practice, um, much, uh, for, if, for people in the audience who are listening, uh, Pavel Tsatsulin has great material. He's uh, a Russian guy who introduced the kettlebell into, into the, into the West, or I guess is primarily responsible for that. I, I could be wrong, but, I, but anyhow, uh, Pavel Satsumin has some very, very great principles that, that, um, pertain to fitness and health and strength and all that. And so he was, he was very influential in my life or in my, in my fitness, uh, in my fitness, um, uh, scheduling. So, yeah, so I don't, I don't do too many of those kind of exhaust yourself, uh, exercises, but I do little, a little mm. bit every day. So in the morning, yeah. to answer your question, I would probably mm -hmm. in the morning, I would take care of some of that. Mm -hmm. uh, the majority of it would be in the morning at some point. And then for the rest of the day, I would still like play around a little bit. So, you know, I've got my channel, I, I do a video editing. I'll, I'm the kind of guy that I'll, I'll be video editing. And then all of a sudden just jump up and then sprint down mm. my hall a couple of times, you mm. know, do some, and then come back mm. and then study or uh, edit again. Uh, maybe five, 10 minutes later, then I'll just do some handstands and uh, like two seconds and then back at the, comp that type of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that way you're, you're always moving. Your nervous system is always getting the stimulation and it's, uh, it helps to give you, uh, it helps to familiarize your body with, with, with movement. No different. I would say than you know, Walking is not a particularly difficult thing to do, but you just, you do it so often that it becomes, you don't even have to think about it. Like the, the all mm. the muscular coordination, it's just right there. Like it, it's, it's dialed in and strength and mobility and flexibility, all of these things, it, it's very much like that. It's, it's no, no big secret. The more you practice them, the, the better they get, the stronger they get the faster they get all, all of these. And it, it really comes down to that practice principle rather than, you know, how, how, how badly can you exhaust your body? Like it works. That, that approach works too. I'm not saying it doesn't work. It's just that I found that this is more, uh, it's, it's more sustainable and it's more applicable to me in my life where I'd, I'd rather not right. do sessions on end. When, when I do do those, like, hour or two hour long sessions it's usually if i'm going to a gymnastics facility where i want to practice a lot of acrobatics and whatnot okay yeah there mm. there i'll get in that full session where i won't do it again for another like couple of days or or, or more mm. but uh but that's you know that's when i'm doing my skill-based training uh is this when I just oh yeah <laughs> yeah i just i just put this up i was testing uh <laughs> testing just testing some uh, a video editing program um, but yeah, so like this, this, for example, is this is just play. This is just, is mm. just playing around, having fun, right? Not, I'm not out there to exhaust myself, I'm not doing anything crazy, you know, out there for 10 minutes, oh, then back at the house, get some work mm -hmm. done, do something else. So mm. yeah, it's, it's more that I just incorporate movement and play and, and strength movements and into my routine without it being like the typical workout. That, that you right. usually are familiar with yeah yeah it's interesting we have a uh question from from kai tell us about your your fruit meals in a typical day so i guess just what's oh, your cool. typical at this point you're in your transition what's your your diet looking like throughout the day gotcha gotcha okay so i, I mean I, i'll just give you 
to example, uh, today woke up. Uh, I didn't really have much until about 10, 30 ish. And it was a bunch of oranges. So a bunch of oranges and clementines. So oranges and clementines, <laughs> oranges and clementines. And that was it until the five, five ish. And then I had grapes and I, I had something else. Uh, oh, a cantaloupe, a cantaloupe and grapes. So today it was oranges in the morning, cantaloupes and grapes in the evening. Yeah. Uh, and that's it. That'll, that'll, that'll be it. It's, it's a very simple approach to eating. Very, very simple, very unexciting. Now don't, don't get confused when I say unexciting. It's, it's not that I'm deprived of excitement. It's just that that's what feels really good. And that's what, that's what feels natural. My, my diet plan doesn't always look like that. It doesn't always work out to two meals in the day, as I've described to you. Sometimes it can be one. Sometimes it can be one bigger meal kind of in the early afternoon. So maybe around two o'clock, I would, I would start with maybe a cantaloupe and then uh, a couple mangoes. Uh, if I felt like I wanted something really, really dense, you could do bananas and dates. I've, I've always loved that combination, bananas and dates. It's not the mm. greatest if you want to cleanse. If you're if you're looking at eliminating right. stuff, that then I don't know that you don't you stay away from that. But yeah, if you're not in the middle of a whatnot, it's a great way to especially blast through cravings. So if you're transitioning to a to a, a, a mucus-free diet, then bananas and dates can help with those old cravings because it kind of takes the place of that calorie rich stuff that we're accustomed to and we find the replacement that's a bit more well maybe it's mucus lean i i, I might even want to say mucus lean mm. um where it doesn't generate as much mucus um if you're looking at mucus free obviously you want the high water content fruit, fruits I distract myself um yeah so my my eating plan it can be two meals a day it can be one meal a day, and it might even, if I'm very physically active, it might be more than that. So, uh, so I described cantaloupe, mangoes, and maybe some pears. Okay, that could be a one meal a day plan for me that I eat at two o'clock when I'm doing one meal a day when when it feels right to do that. Um, it, uh, another day, it could be I could start the day off with grapes, uh, and end the day with some other fruit maybe another melon or like another cantaloupe and then a pineapple i'll, I'll, mm. I'll eat a, a pineapple um that that could be a day but if i were to if i were to encapsulate how i eat in a in a general in a general kind of uh, in a general kind of way it's usually a mono meal or or one fruit at a time and uh yeah either either two meals of that mono fruit style or one mm. every once in a while it, not super often i find i just don't make this choice often i always say on my channel of the, the human foods i would consider fruits leafy green vegetables and nuts nuts and seeds mm. these these are the only real food groups that you can eat um without having to process in any way right that your senses actually uh gravitate to that your senses keen on eating and that they can relish without any form of human trickery or contrivances of any sort, right? So those are all on the menu, but of course, I just tend to stick to the fruit side of that menu. Mm. I, if I have a salad, it'll be a very simple salad, mostly lettuce, a big, big serving of lettuce with maybe tomatoes and uh, cucumbers and uh, pears or apples or something, lime juice. You know, mm, that could mm. be a salad. If I if I feel like having avocado, I will. I I don't usually make that choice though. So uh, you know, a good ninety percent of the time, no more than that, no more than that. Like 95 percent of the time, I'm making those fruit based choices that I described earlier. And then you know, if I want to, if I get curious or just want to try something new, sure, I don't have any problem with a a big salad or <clears throat> maybe like a, a, a nor nori wrap. You know, if, if it's if it's raw and whatnot, um, you know, I can mm -hmm. experiment. I'll, I'll have fun just like anybody else. But I'll never stray too far from the the principles. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. So, so how, how long did it take you to get to, to the regimen you're in now? And, and do you ever find yourself having just like cra- kind of crazy cravings or did you go through a yeah. period where you went through any like significant eliminations uh, mm-hmm. or, or anything like that as you were kind of clearing out some of the old, uh, that old uh, mess. Yeah. Yeah. That, that old, that old riffraff. Um, <laughs> I, I noticed, I noticed a lot of that. My, it was my first year that I noticed the biggest, biggest changes with that. Um, I was always, I, I was shocked when I first started doing the fruitarian, the fruitarian lifestyle. I was, I was shocked at how fast I lost weight. Like it was, it was almost scary. It just flew off me. This is not typical. It's well, it can be typical. I just, I just don't know. Every, everybody's constituted so differently that what you can be assured of is that the detox will happen so long as you're doing the right thing. But for, for me, it just, it was like, my body was like, the floodgates just opened and I was lost all, all, all sorts of weight pretty quickly. And because I was, I, I never really carried around much fat at all. Like I, I looked very, very similar as, as I do now uh, back then, just, just bigger and thicker, bigger, bigger, thicker muscles. I was, you know, a bit of a bruiser. Right? And so there was not this visible fat on me. So when all this weight started flying off, I was, I had already done a lot of reading and, uh, and understanding. And then I knew that it was just waste, just water, water and waste and salt and, this and that stored all in the muscles and oh hey sherry what's going on <laughs> uh sherry's great um yeah so i noticed all of this happening and then subsequently after that the next several months rolled on and a little bit more weight came trickling off a little bit more weight came trickling off the congestion slowly started subsiding i noticed that yeah those the, those those channels were just getting clean clean and free and I was breathing well and just, just starting to feel really, really good. Every once in a while, I'd have some dips in my energy, but not enough to, you know, make me bedridden. Like it wasn't, it, it mm-hmm. wasn't anything like that. I could still maintain my, my activity routine so long as I just, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't going crazy with it. But yeah, there were definitely times where you're less energetic and you have to expect that. You have to expect that if you're going through a transition. Um, so yeah it was more my first year where i noticed those those big shifts once i got into that second year what 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 year was that about what what year um, was that my my first year was the uh was the 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 most drastic changes i would say and then i mean which year oh 2016 2016 Something like that. Yeah, I think about 2016. Yeah, yeah. Um, maybe, maybe it was 2015. And anyway, around there. Yes, around there. So, uh, yes. I, and of course, you know, the next year after the, the second year, third year, more more of that maintenance phase. But you know, I would notice I would notice little changes here and there. I, the the last interview that I was on, I I had mentioned where it was on on Jillian Barry's um, YouTube channel. I mentioned that the, the first time I really noticed that my cardiovascular system was it, it was it was getting really clean was you know took a big big sprint and noticed that I didn't have any of that I wasn't tired I was I was ready, amped up ready to go after a long sprint and it was it was shocking I was like oh my god this feels so good so little things like that I would I, I would start to glean about this new lifestyle and these changes it was making in my body. Um, but yeah, no, there was definitely that renovation period and it can, it, who knows how long it lasts. This is a lifestyle that we're, that we're practicing here. It's not, it's not a quick fix. It's not a, it's not a slim down, you know, plan. I mean, that'll happen, but that's, right. it has nothing to do with the be all and end all of this. Like what, what we're looking at with this lifestyle guys, it, it, whether you do it like, like I've structured it or not. It, you're, the mucus free lifestyle, what you're looking at is it's a lifestyle that's geared towards bringing out the best in you, right? And it's going to, so in so doing, it'll have many expressions depending on the person. But what you can be assured of is it's going to, it will bring out the best, the best in you. 
and uh, and and of course I I, I, I highly advocate it. It's I, I've noticed it with myself, and, uh, and yeah, and it'll happen for everybody. But but yeah, of course you you got to expect you got to expect those periods of unpredictability, where you don't exactly know how 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 the plan is gonna is gonna affect you. But know that whatever that effect is, it's it's because a law is working exactly as it's supposed to. Yeah. So uh, it, it, here's a question, another from from yeah. Kai. So after your first year on fruit, how long did it take for you to build muscle weight from fruit? And this that's the the general question that everybody was like, how do you yeah. build muscle on fruit? And then it's like, right, there's other you see these other animals that do it, but. Then they, but it's like that doesn't even <laughs> process for them. They're, yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. And so, yeah. but it, so in your experience, what was that process like? Did it sound like maybe you you initially went down pretty like as you're really getting rid of a lot of the stuff, you get down pretty yes. pretty thin, and then it naturally starts kind of coming back. But how how was your experience with that? Yes, 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 absolutely. Okay, so first thing to, to remember here is that I never stopped exercising. Like I never, I, I never stopped moving. So all mm. throughout that transition, I was, I was all, cause I mean, I had to, I was, I was right. still in my career, right? I couldn't, I couldn't just stop moving. Right. So I was always practicing. I was still doing my acro. I was still, still doing all of it. Okay. And this is something that I've been doing since I was a kid. So, it, you know, it's, I, athletics was a familiar body, body plan for me. So I just never stopped. Okay. So that's that's one thing to, to consider. How do you build muscle while you're while you're on a fruitarian lifestyle? OK, the, I, you know, I had a comment recently on my channel that brought up the same thing. It's like, well, what about the protein? You know, I, 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 I'm amazed at how often that that comment is made. Yeah, it's such, a, I, it's such a weird theory that they I just know. they just went so crazy with it and people just just bought it. Like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they just but yeah, it's just it's based on very very oh shady shady experimentation. Really We're not up. even humans. Yeah, with, yeah. right. Like it's, it's dogs, yeah. based on rats, like based on rat studies, and then just like some exaggeration. Anyway, so yeah. okay, how do you how do you build muscle? Right? How do you build muscle? The, the, the first help me is I didn't have any stress associated with the way I was eating. So. A lot of people, they're going to, you'd be surprised, but it's going to set you back when you're constantly worrying about not, ha about being undernourished or malnourished mm. or not getting enough protein or whatnot. This mental thing that people carry around with them. Yeah, mm. that matters. And I did not have that because I understood mm. very, <laughs> understood very well that you're not looking dense proteins in your, in your diet, right? That the proteins that are in the, the fruits and the and the nuts and seeds if you if you eat those and the leafy greens it's all the it's all there the whole shebang is there likely even more than you need so I didn't have any stress associated with the way I was eating so that counted right yeah. if I was hungry you just eat more that's that's it now how do you how do you build muscle back there there's again there's no see everybody knows the answer to this you just <laughs> Keep busy. You keep busy. You keep exercise. Keep moving. Yeah. Right. Keep, moving. keep moving. Yeah. Yeah. There's no secret here. There's nothing I can divulge or reveal to you that you don't already know. Right. The only difference is that the way that I I eat right now, it it would be much much more difficult for me to put on the insane amount of mass that let's say a bodybuilder or someone eating an everything goes diet. Yeah. Would. The the unnatural so, mass. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's so that I think that's where people get confused is like they see the the fitness culture out there and and every example of of the of the the best in the fitness culture they're building their bodies on unnatural food for for the human body for the human body, okay? I am not even talking about like steroids and and you know creatine powder. I'm not even talking about that. I'm just talking about less than ideal unnatural foods right that stimulate the body into into growth that ramp up metabolism which is not necessarily something you want you don't really want a fast metabolism but you will get a faster metabolism 
um, when you're just constantly eating all these super stimulating foods. And so, yeah, so, so that's, that's, I kind of, what I want to say guys is that I, I treated my, my fitness and exercise routine no differently. You know, if you want to go to the gym and do, you know, your, your five sets of five sets of six bench press and then, or your five sets of whatever, or your three sets of squats or dumbbell. Yeah, do that. And you the difference is that when you eat a, a mucusless diet, when you eat a, a, a raw food diet, when you eat a, a fruitarian diet, nature will, will take your body and put it to where it is most comfortable, where it's most natural to be. And then whatever muscular gains you make, right, it's it's never going to exceed that that general plan like it's always going to be maintained at a healthy place where your body naturally wants to be that's the secret right that or that's the key so i i fear that when people ask you know oh how do i build all my muscle back okay so so we're asking how do i build all my muscle back after i've lost it all uh from well you don't lose it all but I mean, <laughs> after i've slimmed down <laughs> from uh from a from a cleansing program from a transition program to a to a mucusless freedom and how I would answer that is like, why on earth would you do that? The diet, the, the intention of the diet was to cleanse your body. And the cleansing of your body, that is the loss of all of the waste products that are stored all over your system, including your muscles. Your body does this very intelligently. It's storing all of the, all of the dietary sins. <laughs> it's storing all of those everywhere. And, and of course, in your muscle tissue. So if you're losing weight on a raw food uh, diet or a transition, that's probably a good thing. That's probably what you want. If what you say you want is health, right? Now, to, to, to yeah. want to put all of it back on the other side is oddly counterproductive. Right. You, you, in order to do that, you would need, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> like, like, what is, like, what is this? How does this, this is, what, where did this even come from? <laughs> this was, the people were like, well, this, this is, this looks good. This is, yeah. I feel great. It, you, you don't see like the, the, the most dangerous fighters on the planet don't look like this. You know, yeah, not, yeah. like, what yeah. is this? Like, uh. yeah. Yeah, but I know, and we nice. got a lot of, and we got a number of uh, ex bodybuilders that practice the mm -hmm. mucus diet that are yeah. feel a lot better. They they were, were able to regain their uh, ability to digest food because that often goes away if you're when you're kind of going down this path. Uh, a lot of mm -hmm. the bodybuilders and the folks is high protein, this keto thing. They yeah. they've made that up, and yeah. Uh, yeah. but yeah, this is. Yeah, this is literally it's, it's, just waste. They put waste. It's just waste. <laughs> waste. It's just waste. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're 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 building they're building skeletal muscle on just just metabolic byproducts and and metabolic metabolic filth. Yeah, and so now now just okay. Now I might be dissuading a lot of people out there, but you sh just so you know, you 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 will be fantastically strong you'll be you can you'll be fit you'll be clean you'll be healthy your body will regulate i mean you, you're not going to be starved or, or deprived of of strength gains and whatnot you you will and can get stronger depending on how you on how you exercise so if you're working out um as i was saying before kind of like i do kind of just playing with it day to day mm. i i i work i work out mostly for strength gains right just for strength mm. I'm, I'm not trying yeah, to yeah. put on mass yeah mm -hmm. and so if if that's what you're where you're going then lifting heavy heavy weight or or very high resistance and doing it as often as possible without getting tired that would be mm. in terms of building strength and even a little bit of size that would be that formula if you mm. wanted to put on size then what you would do is you would do the same thing, but you would just really ramp up the amount of sets that you would do. So let's say I wanted to get stronger with a bench press, okay? As, as a fruitarian, right? What you would do is you would you would ramp down the amount of sets, oh, sorry, reps that you would do. So you're only like two mm. to three repetitions yeah. of a pretty heavy weight, 
as like much as seventy five yeah, percent yeah. of your max, and you would do that for like 10, 15 sets or so, and that is a a really really good formula for putting on as much size as your body will allow with a clean diet. Okay, uh, but that's for bulking. It's it's tough bulk, but it's very it's much easier to develop strength. Strength you can who knows where the be all and end all of strength is. You can get ridiculously strong as long as you keep uh, doing strength training and ramping up the the resistance so strength is that's that's anybody can do that and and mm. get stronger and stronger and stronger but in terms of bulking up size wise see now we're getting into the place where diet comes in and the more encumbering the more mis and the more pus the more pus forming foods that you eat in conjunction with exercise okay now you're going to start just filling up like a like yeah, a yeah. Again. right and you don't you don't want that yeah and that's you know something that we generally just tell people to not even because we'll get those questions all the time and we're just like we, we don't even think like that that's not yeah we just want our bodies to do whatever it's supposed to do and just be and and everybody is sort of on their own little journey and everybody's physiology and body's a little different and I noticed a lot of what you did when you were young, even once you change your diet, there's the, you don't lose that, like, like stuff that you learned back when you were like your gymnastics, all that, you didn't lose any of that, but people think yeah. that you're going to lose yeah. stuff when you're like, no. oh, I can't do that anymore. And it's like, and, and, and even with me and, and I don't, cause I just like to feel good. So I don't, yeah. if, if somebody, if I had to go into a weight room and do, what i used to do i i can and i'm st somehow i'm still bigger than a lot of people in there which is fine but mm -hmm. it's like <laughs> it, it, you know it, it's uh you know because of form you know when you you learn you have decent form then you can yeah uh, lift but i yeah. just not it because i lived that life in high school where i bet you're you're just in pain all t 24 hours a day <laughs> you get sore <laughs> you were, you know, three, you know, as we work you know, like every other day, you know, three, three, four times, like just hard work it out, you know, that, that weight lift yeah. like three, three, four times a week. And, yes. um, yeah, <laughs> doesn't make, you know, and then once you get in the diet, you're like, this makes absolutely no sense. There's nothing cause it, cause I'm, it's not making me stronger. I'm mm -hmm. not, it's not helping me better defend myself. If something happens, it's, yeah. it's literally just like this sort of culturally based, uh, kind of, you know, you know, oh, this looks a certain way. This is goes in. It's like, right. man, this doesn't, right? Uh, you know, this right. doesn't work. Like, like brother Air said one time, he's like, man, I'll, I'll be a nub walking around if, if if that's the healthiest form, you know, for me. You know, like, <laughs> and you know, I I think it's important to to mention. So we were talking, we're just we've been talking a bit about how you know it's hard to have your cake and eat it too. Like, I want to keep all my sauce. But, but I want to get clean and healthy. It's, I've had that question. And it's just like at the computer, I'm like, yeah, it's like, I don't, I don't, I don't know how to respond <laughs> to that. Right. It's like, you, you gotta, you gotta choose. Yeah. Um, but one thing I do want to say is that the advantages <laughs> though, the, yeah, you can't, yeah, you can't. <laughs> it's like, you, you gotta pick, do you, do you want health or do you want to keep your body in, in the same proportions it is right now? You, you cannot have both. Right. So it's like, you know, <clears throat> man up, decide, right. Or what, decide whatever so um but one thing i, I did want to say is that uh, the advantages so so what are the advantages aside from from all that that you can expect your recovery will be insane okay when you're mm -hmm. when you're not polluting yeah. your body with all sorts of riffraff you you will re recover from bouts of exercise like you didn't think was possible right i there there have been days where i've just been literally shocked at what i did the day before and how i felt the next morning and I'd just be like, oh, I freaking like I feel like I want to go fight crime right now. This is this is insane. Like, so your recovery mm. will be fantastic. Um, your sleep, yeah. the quality of your, of your sleep will be dramatically enhanced. Okay. Especially if you don't eat too close to bedtime. So you're eating a, a mucus-free diet and you and you cut that, uh, cut your eating window, you know, five o'clock, six o'clock or so. Oh my God, you'll get such good sleep and you won't need eventually eventually you find that you need less of it i'm not saying you know don't sleep but yeah you the quality of your sleep uh, really really goes up especially when the 
the channels of elimination, these are all clear. Oh my God, your, your sleep is, is wonderful. Your cardiovascular efficiency, kind of like I was describing earlier, you find uh, there's a lot of examples of fruitarians that are uh, that do marathon marathon running, like Michael Arnstein, and there's a whole bunch mm -hmm. of them. And and yeah, that cardiovascular efficiency. That's you know, I, I when I started noticing that, it was it was such a joy. It was such a treat. Um, I do a lot of spiritual well, like energy work. Uh, if you if you guys are into meditation or any kind of metaphysical pursuit, you, you know why you wouldn't want to live that mucus free uh, lifestyle is, is anyone's guess. Like you definitely want like clean respiratory channels and that's going to translate into everything. Your, your endurance, your muscular endurance, uh, just the whole system is, is totally overhauled when you get all of this, all of this junk out of you and um, your, you, you, your injuries, it's much less likely that you'll get injured, injured you can sustain a, a lot more abuse and your joints and whatnot will still be lax and loose and supple. Your flexibility is good. Uh, it, and it will, it will be much more easily sustained even without doing hard flexibility all the time. It just, it just, everything works in, in this wonderful way. Um, and you're more hydrated. You're, you're, you're the, the stuff you're eating is, is highly, uh, highly saturated with water high water content fruits and vegetables. So when you're better hydrated and you're not eating things that dehydrate you, well, your muscles are going to be more hydrated. So you, you'll you have better quality workouts. And it's just, you know, on and on and on it goes. So th those are some of the advantages that you can, that you can really expect when you are an athlete, when you want to keep, keep doing athletic uh, endeavors, whatever it is, whatever it, athletic endeavor is of your choice and you and you clean up the diet so that you're not you're not polluting your drift crap right and so it, there's all these wonderful things that happen yeah yeah and uh i think we we i think we have a, a like a delay and i know that for the folks watching if it's a little blurry i i've, I've got a backup recording so i'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna pop that up there uh but okay. uh but yes and, and i don't i don't know uh it, it might if if you if you leave and like come back in that could reset it or we could just just deal with the <laughs> with the delay um okay okay uh, if i leave and come back um you mean if i if i switch to another window or something on my end or? well no like if if you uh if, you know leave the platform and come right back in oh i see i see uh, okay, okay yeah yeah some that that because this has happened before with brother air and it would kind of reset everything and it wouldn't there wouldn't be like oh, this delay okay okay w would you like me to do that would you like me uh, to, yeah uh, go ahead go ahead and do that and uh okay okay so i'll leave studio and then just come back yeah in leave the same studio way. and just come come right back in okay yeah. all right i'll get see you guys in all a right. bit all right so we're taking a quick little break uh as i know yeah i guess i apologize for if, if this is blurry on the live uh, i am gonna re uh, well we always re-upload the audio i'm gonna re-upload the, the video probably as well and uh yeah this is some internet issues and you know it's they make all these things all this we're so futuristic and but we, we can't just get 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 the simple stuff that right you know let's just get the <laughs> let's focus on the things the internet speed you know the, all, all that kind of stuff let's just let's just do that so all right so eli's back let's see if if it's still if uh i don't know if there's a delay yet we'll find out <laughs> okay cool 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 yeah yes yeah, that yeah, sounds so. like it's better <laughs> yes so uh uh so tell me a little bit about your fasting practices and when when did you start incorporating fasting was that there sort of from the beginning in that first big year and mm -hmm. what kind of fasting do you do and you know i've seen some videos on your your channel about that just uh share a little bit about your your fasting experiences okay cool um luckily for me i got onto the fasting thing uh way before i was fruitarian so mm. so that i started doing yeah when uh oh, about eight years prior to going transitioning into the fruitarian lifestyle so I think that really helped me when I did go more fruit based because I, I more than likely got a good deal of elimination going on throughout these fasts. So I started 
with weekly 36 hour fasts. So on the weekend, my, mm -hmm. my, my routine is on the weekend, I'm Friday, Friday would be my last meal at dinner time, And then I would pick it up again on Sunday morning. So I did that every week for years and years. Well, I mean, I still, I still do, but it's just, then I had to think about it because it mm -hmm. wasn't just like a, a natural thing. It was right. like, so it was all, it was on my mind. Now, you know, I'll go, I'll go a day without eating and it's just, it, it's, it, it's nothing. It's just like, it's just the blink of an eye, you know, I'll go, a day and a half is just, doesn't mean anything. Right. Uh, so it's, it's, uh, it's become a lot more ingrained into my, into my routine. So, so I started doing that many, many years ago. And then I, every once in a while, do a little bit of a cleanse, a different type of cleanse. So I think that one of the first cleanses I did was an apple, a, apple fast or mm. an apple cleanse. Mm. Like yeah, three yeah. day apple cleanse and and mm -hmm. um, that one that was they were tough like that was tough uh, now in retrospect looking back but yeah so in those earlier years i i pretty much only kept it to those 36 hour fasts which is still good it's tolerable anybody can do it and but it doesn't it doesn't access the deeper levels of cleansing there were a couple times when i did three day fasts here or there Never, I never did you know week long fasts when I was you know in that vegan phase of my life where I was fasting uh, every mm -hmm. weekend. Mm -hmm. But I but it gave me a good head start to get into the cleaner lifestyle that I was that I was going to embark on later on. So I I I I, I really feel like I did myself a service in 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 preparing myself in that way. But mm -hmm. in terms of any kind of major elimination or major changes. No, I didn't. I didn't notice anything major, primarily because on the other end of of the fasts, I would just eat the same thing that I was always eating. So I was never ever isolating a particular thing and say, okay, on the other side of the fast, I'm gonna scale this down a little bit, and then the next mm -hmm. time, it's like, okay, I'm gonna pick this thing and then replace it with something. Like I wasn't doing that. I mm -hmm. was just doing the fasts, and so it was kind of this like maintenance thing going on mm. and you know sprinkled in with a couple of little cleanses there like like the apple cleanse that i mentioned and you know a, a three day three day fast here or there so getting some good at working but later All on right. once i went fruitarian that's when i started doing you know kind of the more intense fasted fasts excuse me um and i've, I've week-long water fasts uh i've done I've, the max the longest i've done is a 32 day water fast I've done I've done a, a bunch of dry fasts as well, um, seven days. I believe I did a ten day one as well, and those are so. How did they go? What do you experience? What do you expect? All that stuff. With water fasting, um, you can definitely you can definitely expect in in the first couple days. I would usually feel very okay. You usually feel very good. I think the first the very first mm -hmm. time I did a right. water fast that was longer than three days. That was the first time I noticed the, the, the typical detox symptoms, nothing mm -hmm. bad, nothing mm -hmm. crazy, nothing, nothing horrible. I noticed there were one on one day, you know, I had a little bit of a, a you know, red marks or like, a, a, I don't even want to say rash, but like red bumps and whatnot appear. It's just like, oh God, what the hell is that? Right? But then it goes mm -hmm. away. I, um, I think it was the, the, on the third day, if I'm not mistaken, I started feeling a bit of nausea, no vomiting, but just a bit of nausea, right? As, mm. as the fast kind of just kind of works everything out in there. But so that was the first time I tried a, a longer, like a five day water fast. After that fast, I was still eating cleanly on the other side. So I wasn't breaking my fast with pancakes and whatnot, which I had been known to do in my vegan days. Mm. <laughs> Don't do that. Um, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. You, you do not want to. I made damn good pancakes, but my goodness, you do not want to break a fast with pancakes, guys. Jesus. No. Um, <laughs> so, so after that first initial fast, then the subsequent fasts, I I stopped noticing those really uncomfortable detox symptoms. But what you can usually always expect, regardless of what stage you are in your fasting experience. The first couple, let's let's say you do have a little bit of experience already. I know there's a lot of listeners here that are that are 
you know, well on their way in this, in this lifestyle. The first couple of days, you'll probably feel very good, right? Yeah, you probably feel very good. And then once the glycogen stores kind of get depleted uh, on the water fast, then you'll notice the dip in your energy. So your energy will go down. You'll, you'll be mentally alert. You'll want to read. You'll want you just, like the lights will come on upstairs. This is this is why you you know you hear the the, the yogis and whatnot always fasting and uh, fasting and meditation always go hand in hand. Why? Because all the energy that you're conserving from not having to digest food, it, your your brain, your your mind gets a lot of this energy that is now no longer squandered with with digestion. And so it may, it enhances the quality of your meditative experience. So whether it's reading, whether it's work or product, you're going to be really alert upstairs, but your body right. will, and that's that, will the want principle to rest. Of, uh, yeah, vitality equals power minus obstruction. You know, as Arnold Eretz says, you remove the obstruction and, yeah. and it's a, it's a miracle. We heal and clarity of thought and all, you know, all kinds of creative things can come out of that. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, those, yeah, those first two days, that's because that's usually what we say too, is like, yeah, those, after this first two days of a fast, mm -hmm. <laughs> then you're, then you, then you're good. If you, if you yeah, keep going, good, but yeah. you know, yeah. uh, or, but we, I, I tend to recommend following Eric's recommendation until you really get good at those short fasts. Uh, cause yeah. once you, if you can master the shorter fasts or, 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 or whatever level, you know, uh, that you, whether it's uh, water, dry, uh, wh whatever you're into, uh, it's it's just getting you closer to just, yeah. just getting you closer to the, the the higher levels, getting cleaner, being able to sustain, you know, sustain things. And again, each each person's body, everybody's coming from a different place, body's body's different. So, you know, these things take take different levels of time but uh but when you're putting in that work and because that's what mm -hmm. people don't a lot of people don't like that you know and that's what they don't yeah. like about the transition concept is there's it's not a quick fix it's not an overnight sensation it's like no you gotta like just work with the principles over time and it you transform your physiology right Right. Absolutely. Yeah. It, it, one thing I can say for sure is that with when you combine uh, the the cleaning lifestyle, you, your body becomes just just madly efficient, you know, very, mm -hmm. very, very efficient. And it's able to absorb and extract ornition from everything. And you're able to be very well sustained even even on a fast. So, I mean, I can I can share my screen here. I did. So for us to Iceland and decided to take a trip around Iceland mm. and uh, while I was fasting. And so maybe, okay, maybe I can share my screen here. Uh, let's see, share screen. Never really done this before. Share screen, yeah. Oh, window. Okay, I'll share it my might entire be like screen. A, might be like an ad at the, there's, there's like a square and then you have to hit it again in the middle. Oh, really? Oh, I see. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, like add or something like that. Yeah, then I okay. then I click it over here and add to or the screen. Oh, I see. Okay, can you see my screen right now? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So, just as an example, so this I, I was doing a trip uh, to Iceland, and the whole time I was fasting. So it was about a week, a week in Iceland. And if you hit that and... little hide, that little hide button there in the middle. Oh yeah. Hide that. Yeah. There you go. Does that work? Yeah. Can you see everything yeah. now? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, as much as, as much as, yeah, a good fast will probably make you want to relax and lie down. Yeah. You, you still do function well, or you can function quite well. Um, once you have a little bit of experience in fasting and once you, your body gets cleaned out, it's like, it's like, um, it's like Professor Spiro was just saying, it's just the channels, the channels become so clear and the energy flows well throughout the system. And so even without food, you are getting, you're getting this abundance of energy that you can still function well, uh, still function well with. And so I was able to go on this trip and just explore and climb, you know, climb mountains and 
run around and jump and jump on rocks and whatnot all all while uh, while fasting uh, with just water mm. and uh, yeah and so it, it, it's uh it really is amazing i found what what the body's capable of when when it's treated well when the diet is is simple and when you subject yourself to these little uh, cleansing bouts whether it's cleansing whether it's a, a water fast uh, or dry fast once you get a little experience so anyway i'll stop sharing this now and okay oh how do i get back ah here we go yeah stop stop yeah, yeah. okay good am i back yeah yeah okay. yeah um and that's uh, so and that's almost those those fasting trips be, end up really kind of becoming like a, a rites of passage for folks that's really oh, yeah. Cause that's that, yeah. you know, Arnold Eric, we talked about it, but he did his like two years where he was just out and, and, and mm -hmm. doing, uh, riding his bike, e eating nothing but fruit, you know, and then riding mm -hmm. his bike all around the uh, Northern, Northern Africa and, yeah. uh, and, and then meeting with all those people there. And he was observing and seeing that there were, there were people that were not like the Europeans that, that ate a, a lot of fruits and vegetables that were ve relatively vegetarian or, whatever but like kind of didn't eat a startitarian vegetarian that we know about it they ate just like fruit like fruits vegetables and maybe some grains or something uh and there was one group of people that that smoked and he noticed that they, they lived really long now yeah. i'm 100 <laughs> against smoking this is not the advocate i'm just yeah. but it shows you <laughs> where do we put the priority because they yes. always put oh smoking's the worst thing well it's it's, it's certainly not good but yeah pus is the worst thing <laughs> you know pus, pus <laughs> yeah is yeah what's gonna yeah. age and take you out early and uh exactly. but yeah he did that, that two year then his uh, uh 49 day fast which was a water fast that was the he basically did like a ripley's believe it or not where he he in, he was encased in uh in, in a big clear box in the middle of switzerland and people could come 24 hours a day and just kind of gawk at him and he was in there mm. he did that for 49 days so that was that was the world record in fasting for a long time uh because that was monitored yeah. by swiss officials and the public yeah. saw it and uh, and of course he wanted to go longer he, he it was just so terrible conditions because you don't that's not how you want to fast you don't want to be in, yeah. in a in a clear yeah. box with no sun you know no, yeah. no fresh air so that uh but but yeah, that's uh, it's definitely this like a rites of passage. Of course, I, I think I think one thing I want to say is if you guys do do fast, and I don't want to make sure that I'm answering the question, uh, just the general question: how does how did fasting work for me in my experience? So, um, you know, just just let me know something in particular you wanted to know. But one thing I would I would just urge you to do, or I guess not do. Is if you are about to go a longer fast, you know, a fast of more than three to five days or so, you want to go a week fasting, that's great. But I wouldn't make a a big spectacle about it. Like it's mm -hmm. not a fast is between you know you and God. A good fast is between you and and your your internal energy, your spirit. Right. It's it's a very it's a very personal thing. And especially mm. with the world as it's constructed, um, unless you're going to a, okay, unless you're going to a fasting retreat where there are very like-minded individuals there who understand actually what's happening and what you're going through, that's a bit of a different scenario. But if you're just, you know, your day to day and you, you want to do a fast, I would suggest not to advertise that you're doing the fast and just keep it a very personal journey, right? Just keep it all inside. And yeah. because the, because I tell you the world will not understand. They will not understand right now. They will not understand what you're doing. They will see you get thinner, very very thin and different, because it will happen. It, it happens to me. It happens. It, it'll happen to everybody. And they will all they will see is someone who is dying, someone who is sick, someone who who you know is has some food eating disorder. Or, or something right they, they just right. they will not understand and when you start getting that negative energy this critical energy 
this um, this worrisome, doubting energy from all of your family and your friends, if you don't don't have a strong constitution, if you don't have a thick skin, you will start to doubt yourself. And that is the yeah. last thing that you need when you are fasting. When you're fasting, you're making you're making a contract with with your inner wisdom, that inner spiritual wisdom, whereby you're saying, okay, I'm I'm affording you rain to take control of my body and use your infinite wisdom to clean clean it out and do whatever you need to do in order to get that job done because I'm interested in my higher development. Right. This is this is the path that you're making with that internal fire inside of you. So, yeah, it, and you'll find that if you do that, if you keep it just this very personal, private endeavor, it's so rewarding. Mm. You will make, like, your mind will just come alive. It's hard to describe all of the things that happen mentally, you know, when you're on a longer fast like that. It's just, your thinking become you, you become very creative. You start... A lot of people will make new business plans and just start imagining all these wonderful things. You'll you'll have incredible dreams. Like, yeah. So you yeah. You, you take yeah. this journey on your on your own, unless you uh, again, yeah, unless you're going to like a fasting clinic where there are people who just yeah, understand yeah, yeah. and are not going to be showering you with that deluge of negative energy. Right. Just, or if you know, you're yeah. you know, if you're like if you come to a mucus free meetup on a Wednesday. Yeah, we know we we got your back. We'll pat you on the yeah. back. You know, if that's if if you if you need that, uh, you know, yeah. or if you want to want to share, of course, we 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 know what's what's up. But yeah, well, on the the day to day. But no, I agree. That was something that I've generally always done. Where I was very when I if I'm doing a fast, like it, I usually don't tell anybody. And yeah. uh, until and yeah. I might say something when I'm done with it. <laughs> I'll be yes. like, "Oh yeah, I just yes. did. Oh yeah, I just yes. did whatever ten days or something." And uh, yes, well, yeah, yeah. But uh, yes, yeah, I learned Absolutely. that yeah you know, in the early days of <laughs> practicing. Mm -hmm. Where uh, yeah. yeah, where <laughs> now in the er, in the real early days, I kind of got a kick out of just blowing people's minds, and so I would, I would, <laughs> I would open myself up to that, you know. And so that was those yeah. were. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah those early days and i got to a point where i was like you know what let me just publish some stuff and then just let pe people find it <laughs> and i won't talk mm -hmm. about it anymore like that and right, um right right but uh yeah no that's that's good good advice because it, it really is it's just a personal thing it's not something yeah. where people come out and they 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 do a lot of the you know track their fast on youtube and that kind of stuff <laughs> and, and and i'm not and there's fr friends of mine that, that done that. So this, I'm not attacking anybody. I'm just saying, like, to me, and what I've always done is just like this kind of personal thing. It really is the same with, uh, with, 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 with my meals and eating. Is one, it's kind of like you described. A lot of my meals are not exciting, and so it's mm -hmm. because a lot of people to get popular around here. It seems like you gotta, <laughs> you know, you gotta have some beautiful photos of just the most gorgeous fruit plates. <laughs> and just like oh wow this in mine is just like here's a here's an apple <laughs> this is what i ate today. this is what i this was my meal and uh so it's not not too exciting as, as you said earlier but uh but yeah no that, that and then but then what's what's deep because some people what they do is they try to use doing fa like fasting videos like that's a uh, some kind of, uh, uh, you know, keeping them accountable or something like it's for, like, yeah, Oh, yeah, I put yeah, this yeah. out here. So I gotta, that is not how yeah. you're supposed to fast that, that pressure yeah. and all that outside yeah. energy. That is not it. You know, that's definitely exactly. a very first personal journey. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very well put. It's yeah. It's, you don't want that extra mental tax or burden of responsibility. Like you, you when you're fasting, you choose a time where nothing is going to be happening in your life as much as possible. Choose a time where it's just you you can knock out this time that's just just me time. That that is the best time to do this cleansing. Because again, it energy expenditure is energy expenditure. If you've got a lot of stuff going on, um, work-wise and stress-wise, I mean, this will take energy, precious energy that could be used. To do some very vital detoxing right so so keep it very simple 
you know you don't have to make it if you if you're doing like worrying about the fasting tracking and all that i mean what are you going to forget take a piece of goddamn yeah, yeah, paper well, yeah, right down they're... wednesday <laughs> you know there you go fasting tracking <laughs> okay wednesday at five o'clock all right that's that's all the tracking you need when you break your fast you can just write down wednesday you know yeah yeah and i'll <laughs> it's, and I'm... it doesn't have to be more complicated <laughs> no and I'm the type of person that I generally don't really know how long because I don't I don't track at all. Like because I just I'm kind of doing mine a day at a time. And yeah. and I so I don't be like, oh, that I'll be like, I don't know. It felt like five or six days. And it'd be like, oh, no, it's 15 days. Oh, OK. Yeah. yeah. All right. Whatever. <laughs> you know, just great. Not a not a big deal to me. But yes. Um, yeah. But yeah. Yeah. No, that's 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 sage sage advice then the, the definitely uh yeah really focus on because that's just in general something that people don't or are, are scared of is that this lifestyle brings and when you really it is you gotta deal with yourself you're going inside looking in the mirror being honest with yourself and it's not you can't like pawn that off on a group which is what a lot of people mm -hmm. want to do is sort of like like oh let me get this energy i'm just like nah this is you got to deal with yourself for a while yeah and then yeah. you get yourself together now you can come out and we can you know really really you know benefit from from the group but um yeah yeah def definitely yeah no absolutely and um and of course you know there are lots of different different ways to cleanse and fast you know we were talking about more water fasting uh, if you did want to try dry fasting that's something that's available but i i would always suggest that you should you should really have some good experience with water fasting first and definitely a clean diet right you you don't you don't really want to be jumping into a dry fast you know after downing like seven big macs or something like that or if or if that's a that's oh, definitely not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely not. Yeah, definitely not. You yeah. you want to be you want to be well clear of the standard processed food diet before you even think of dry fasting. If you're asking me, because that stuff you know when it's clogged up in your body, and now you're gonna go on a dry fast, and you, it it's yeah, it can be it can be painful. There, it will <laughs> it will be painful. Right? Well, yeah. But if you yeah, no. but if you clean out first, then dry fasting can be shockingly comfortable like shockingly comfortable um so yeah. so there's that too but uh, you know we can go into all these all the types of cleanses uh but i'm not i'm not sure maybe you're seeing if, if people have questions is there anything that's left let's unanswered? see uh, yeah, let's see if uh the questions uh cryptic asks what what do y'all think of frozen fruit oh uh, yeah yeah um if you uh there's a, there's a bit of old uh, old wisdom that goes, you know, eat not that which has been touched by fire or frost, because both mm. of them, both of them are extreme extremities that tend to rob life of its of its of all of its qualities that tend to destroy life in 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 in, in ways. So let's let's with fruit, for example, if you and okay, let me let me say this first. I'm not telling you not to eat frozen fruit. It's it you know, there's so many worse choices you could make. Yeah, and you're there's, right. You, you, there's so many worse. Yeah, you know, like so. Don't don't feel any guilt if you're doing you know some some banana and ice cream or whatnot. Like I've I, I've done it. I don't mind doing it. It's not something I do often. But don't feel mm -hmm. guilt about that just because of what I'm right. about to say. Right. But um, with with fruit. You still do if you freeze a fruit and then try to dethaw it, it is now no longer the same fruit, right? It will it will oh, be no. compromised. Yeah. The, the 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 ice crystals will kind of penetrate the the cell walls and um and it'll it'll destroy them, the fiber. So you can't really freeze fiber. It just it just work. You can try it. Try it with uh with, with some fruit, high water content fruit, and it'll just it'll just be a pile of mush. So the the frost does compromise the integrity of the fruit so how exactly metabolically that works when you digest it uh, that that's the realm of god i don't know but what i can tell you is that it is no longer what it was okay it has been compromised and same thing with the other end of the polarity with heat right you you wouldn't want to eat too much cook well depending on what your what your goals are uh, but the, the cooked food is also 
compromised. There's also damage. It is now, uh, enzymatically speaking, no longer what it was. So, so treat now. If I had to choose between the two, I would choose frozen over over heated foods, over cooked foods. I would go with the frozen fruits over mm-hmm. that. I mean, my my but, thing um, with that is is the different. You know, not not all cooked food is created equal. And uh, yeah, it, yeah. Or, you know, oh, I, that's true. Yes, that's true. Because uh, you know, some some steam kale is is a lot different than uh, yeah, some, some fried chicken wings or something yeah, yeah 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 of course of course yeah we can't discount that yeah oh, absolutely you know it's, uh, uh, yeah so slightly yeah. steamed vegetables you're 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 getting a fantastic meal and uh yeah that, that becomes a hard choice huh it's like we we always play this it's like what's worse and it's like uh, i or what's better it's it's sometimes yeah. very very difficult to pinpoint what that would be. But I, I guess in the end, just well, know what's ideal. Just know what's yeah. ideal. And then you can afford to make these these little uh, variations so long as you're not drifting way outside of the balance and you're going to be fine. Right? Yeah, when, when you understand, that's why we always constantly talk about transition. And what I try to yeah. get people to understand with Arnold Eretz's book is to separate the the there's the transition information and then there's the ideal philosophy that he lays out like this is the ideal food for humans this is this is the best situation this is the ideal fast under the best conditions that doesn't mean that this is what you have to do right away and and as fast because then there's a whole other section of transition that's got vegetarian items and all kinds of stuff for whatever whatever you need it's like these all these tools and so that's how i look at it what it's 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 tools and as as the kids say there's levels to this thing and it's just as you get higher up you dispense with some, with the the lower things and so uh right. so somebody might do a lot of if they if you're into smoothies or something and you're doing the frozen fruit that way i don't recommend that a, a lot mm-hmm. that to me that's more like a treat or something or something to do re- 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 every once in a while but that's just as I, I always related to smoothies like with, with eric talks about why soup is not good where it's just it's, it's kind of hard to mm-hmm. uh, for the body to deal with that particular mixture but like you said i'd rather see somebody do that than than a lot of other stuff it's just yeah you, yeah yeah exactly. it's refinement and that's why i talk about this way a lot of life is an art form as opposed to a science experiment because mm-hmm. it's just we're talking refinements and so it's like where wherever you start is is where you're starting but we can when when, when you start talking on this level we're just kind of looking at the how do you tweak this or it's like okay well if i eliminate this and put this over here how, how will this change <clears throat> my trajectory mm-hmm. you know it's like you start it's just a higher higher level of of discussion, but it's all part of the same discussion, you know, to me, yes. you know, it's all part of that same discussion of just wherever you're at to, you know, taking it up a notch and improving yeah. and, uh, and just cleaning it up. Cause every, everybody can make those steps. Now, if you want to get on the fast track and you want to get real serious, then it's like, all right, let's go, <laughs> you know? And then that's, right. but that's right. a lot of that's an attitude too. There's, you know, when, when you're getting, building aspect of the lifestyle whereas there's certain i've seen people that might have all the physical like physically they could do certain things but their attitude is not really proper mm-hmm. and then they, they can't get too far they, they get stuck and yeah. um so yeah so that the attitude the character and all those you know you as a person that that type of uh that level right, of development right. and that's and that's going to come through and and what you end Absolutely. up eating and yeah. yeah and and yeah and well i think you brought up something really important there too when uh, when eric talks about it's it's that distinction to be made between the transition and the ideal right and speaking in the absolute speaking in the ideal and so the new reader is going to come to that and they're going to they're going to see the ideal and they're just going to zero in on that because it's it's so attractive it's so attractive to want to be in this ideal state eating this ideal diet right of, of course of, of course wouldn't you 
if if I was if I was going to give advice, I would I would just say get rid of the guilt, right? Mm -hmm. If you're on the lifestyle and you, you so now you're informed, okay? Now you know better. Don't get rid of the guilt, right? Do make your transitionary steps. Take take whatever time you need with that. And when you do, enjoy it. Enjoy the heck out of it. Right? What what makes the difference is as long as you're learning from each from you know, from each meal, right? Make sure you're learning from each of these experiences, but don't get rid of the guilt, right? Because that that will kill you. you know, it's not, yeah, it's not, not gonna kill you. It's not gonna assassinate you. But I'm, you know what I mean. It's yeah. it's really gonna weigh on you. And yeah, um, uh, yeah, yeah. And I think yeah, people yeah. just get just get uh, run into a lot of problems when every time they have a transitionary meal that isn't the ideal, they, they get flooded with all this stress and guilt, and it's just like no, 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 no. Get rid, get rid of that, right? Just have fun with it. Enjoy the process, right? Enjoy. It's part of the life. That is the life, right? That that transition, and then you know what happens after. Like is like just take it for what it is, and and have fun with it. Enjoy it, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Vol always said, you know, don't be hard on yourself. Don't. Yeah. That doesn't help. That trying to force yourself to do things that's not mm -hmm. that doesn't work. It's uh, you know, applying the principles and techniques and then letting your body do what it's designed to do is, yeah. uh, is definitely, definitely recommended. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah. So, yeah, I, so one, uh, so one question back to so the, the filmmaking, uh, yeah, I'm interested that do, do you, uh, uh, so that environment, sort of that culture, because people, everybody's always fascinated with, you know, like the Hollywood and all that kind of stuff. Uh, what do you get access to that kind of like, what's that look like? Because you're behind the scenes. Do you get invited to the crazy parties or that kind of stuff? And you're just like, no, nah, I'm good. <laughs> like, um, thank you. But no, uh, you guys do that. Like, what's that like? Kind of what's what, what, what do you what do you see behind behind the behind the scenes? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's it probably isn't what people are thinking, right? It's not the mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's not the high glam, you know, thing. You do get to okay. Well, it, it, in my experience as a stunt guy, yes, you do get to go to rap parties. Yes, you do get to go to screenings like uh, movie screenings, and yes, you get to you, you get to interact mm -hmm. and see, you know, the the uh, the the actresses. You you know you you get to communicate with them if you're working with them you have no choice you, you gotta you gotta mingle with them you gotta you know you have to work to right just like just like any other job so so yes you you do get that um some to, i've heard of uh, sometimes stunt guys getting invited to more exclusive private parties it happens from time to time mm. i i I've, yeah. I've had it a couple of times where you know the uh, the star was having some you know having like a private thing at, at his uh, at his chalet or his or his uh, condo or whatnot, and he get invited there, and it's cool. yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's cool. It doesn't happen all the time, but um, but yeah. So you do. It, it's it's interesting in that you when you're when you're interacting with uh, with with these people with you know with the stars and whatnot, you just it's just it's a job. You know, you just see them as people. At least at least for me. Yeah, you, you you do what you need to do to get to get the job done at the end of the day, and uh, it it doesn't it isn't necessarily you know you're not twenty four seven starstruck unless yeah. you have a, a fixation with with whoever it is like a particular but, person. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. But you know, uh, I you know some some authors I would be just star starstruck you know to <laughs> to meet um, with, with actors and actresses. It's it's something it's really yeah it's, it's really cool but you know it's not uh it's not anything that is it's it's a job you know it's a job i i like it it's a it's a great job i have a lot of fun with it it's uh, it's where my passions align and uh but yeah it's uh it's not like all high glam you're very often waiting around for hours doing nothing right on mm -hmm. set so oh yeah, yeah. So you, hurry up yeah. and wait <laughs> like, hurry up and wait yeah exactly so you'll very often be be doing nothing or you won't be waiting in your your green room or your holding area you might be waiting uncomfortably off just offset 
you know, maybe it's raining, maybe it's, there's a lot of discomfort that you might have to, <laughs> that you might have to uh, put mm. up with or experience. And uh, they don't really tell you that when, you know, when you want to become a stunt guy, it's like, yeah, what's your, what's your tolerance for discomfort? It's like, you know, <laughs> you'll be, you'll be, right. you'll be out in rain and, and snow and just like shivering. Uh, you'll, there, there's wetness, you know, depending on, there's all, there's all of these, we throwing on stuff where, a mask, like a like a helmet or a, or a mask or prosthetics where you can't breathe properly. There's some prosthetics that I've had to wear where it's just like, thank God that I can go to work and just not eat and be very comfortable. Mm, right. Um, which is, by the way, how I deal with a lot of uh, many of my days on set. Uh, if you mm. guys are curious, like how I square this with my lifestyle, yeah, very, yeah. very, 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 very often, I will just go to work and I'm there for the day and just not eat. And I'll, I'll do all the physical things that, that are necessary, do, do, do everything that I need to do, and either not um, just wait till I get home and then have, have my silly little cantaloupe and mango when I get home. Or maybe I even don't eat that evening and then go back to work the next day and then just do it on the next day. So like this, I, I can very often do that. If I do bring uh, food with me to work, then I'll just, it can be anything, a Tupperware with cut up apples and, and dates uh, or a cantaloupe. I'll just, you know, bring a knife or something and just chop it open, get the tray or the cantaloupe and then, you know, so very simple. But in terms of, yeah, the, the, the lifestyle of the, that you guys were asking about earlier, yeah, it's, uh, you know, you're, you're going to work, getting the job done. You 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 do get to see and mingle and interact with the, with the actors and actresses, which is which is really cool actually. But um, and you, yeah yeah you do get to wrap parties and uh, screenings, premiere screenings, which are which are always very nice. So there's a there's a bit of that, but it's it's yeah. probably not what you're thinking. You know what I mean? Yeah, you you yeah you you stay out of the the the, the crazy shenanigans that the cr is, yeah the yeah. Oh, the the yeah, TM yeah, exactly. kind of stick. <laughs> kind of yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's not it's not really that. Yeah. yeah you yeah. might if you're if you're the main stunt double for an actor, like and and you know, you're the stunt guy that travels around everywhere with the with that actor and you got you cultivate a good relationship, that stunt double might might see some of that, you know, go to the right, go to the right. parties and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, but you know, you're just like a kind of day to day player. Uh, it, yeah, it's you're you're based you're going to work and then you're coming home. Right, right. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and the uh, so the last topic I wanted to uh, talk about, and this was somebody just asked question mm -hmm. here. Uh, if 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 they uh, he said they didn't make you get the pinky <laughs> hope to <laughs> to act in Canada, and uh, and uh, yeah, so what's what do you mean? What's the whole uh, COVID <laughs> COVID experience been there in, yeah. uh, in Toronto? It, it's 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 silly. It's silly here in Toronto. It's silly. It's silly in the states. It's it's silly everywhere. It's it's this. It's just this fear campaign that is is running rampant everywhere, and people are are buying it up, drinking the Kool Aid, and uh, we're we're you know, oh gosh. No, it's not. It's not. It's not mandatory. The 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 Pokemon poke poke. It's not mandatory. But they're, what they're trying to do is they're trying to make life as inconvenient as possible, so as to incentivize you know the average person to go and dose themselves with experimental therapy, gene gene destroying therapy and and poisonous adjuvants and just all just just. Utter nonsense. I mean, the, the yeah. stuff is so so violently bad for you. I, I you wouldn't even know where to begin. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure I mean, that's you know. Yeah, and it's sorry, it's just sorry. so uh, it, well. And in in Canada, had it was was sort of on that list of of some of the worst. Now there's places that are worse, but uh, mm -hmm. in terms of uh, not being able to travel you leave you can't yeah. get back in unless you have the pokey poke uh yeah and uh and i know you there were some things you weren't able to do <laughs> weren't yeah. able to travel uh because because of all that um 
so how's the resistance been? And I know I'm gonna bring up uh there was a video you shot of a um let me add this. There we go. This is uh looks like a demonstration that it, it well, there was a thing said it, it wasn't they took it off of YouTube, they that you tried to post this on YouTube and they, they took it yeah. off or something. Yeah, yeah. I I've once uh, well once 2020 rolled around and and the uh, you know this narrative started to really thrust itself in the in the you know in the in the culture i yeah i noticed a lot of my videos were, i'm just getting i'm starting getting strikes all of a sudden and mm, i didn't, wow. couldn't figure out why i'm like what 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 am i posting that's so you know that's violating these youtube policies like it's just, right. like i would i would get strikes for for just a speech for yeah getting a strike for just, just uploading one guy speaking wow. uh, who, oh gosh uh david wolf david wolf came yeah. to speak in toronto i uh, recorded it and yeah. put up just his lecture and they and they gave me a strike i'm like what, wow what is going on wow. yeah, it, this is nothing yeah, and i, well, not I heard about that yeah david they yeah they they started they just totally ripped him off of everything i think on youtube mm-hmm yeah, like yeah. they basically, I think they black like, uh, what the equivalent of like a blacklisting of a person, right? And right, uh, right. and I think they did that with David, and then now some of the uh, the the anti inoculationists <laughs> they mm -hmm. uh, they had done that for this, some of them perfectly, you know, just people who otherwise would just be up upstanding citizens. They're not saying anything yeah. real controversial to me, but uh, they they definitely took them down. And um, yeah, yeah, and, that's, it's and the, the the resistance has been good. It has been growing. It, it, it there's it's definitely a growing spirit in in uh, well at least in Toronto as far as I can see. It's still still not the news that you're seeing with those mass rallies in in Europe that are going on going yeah, on all yeah. over Europe. But it's no, I've 2020 was an incredible year for me. I, I met so many fantastic people and it was just it felt so nice to have this congregation of individuals who who were online in terms of uh human rights natural human rights that we all have and yeah you know very informed uh citizens and informed individuals who would never have come together and aggregated in this way had there not been some sort of overt threat Mm -hmm. that we could focus our attention on and i think it's i'm it's the silver lining in all of this is that as much as the ostensible authorities are are just pulling every trick out of the hat to to supersede and and to uh, just do away with all of your rights and all of your freedoms as much as they're they're going crazy with this right now right it's causing an, a necessary reaction it's 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 allowing people to really really kind of wake up to this and focus their attention on what really matters like really fighting and of course that's that's your your health your wellness and your your freedom and you we're seeing that we're seeing that in toronto now uh we we have been you know since the, the beginning but more and more people are coming online more and more people are getting involved you're seeing these freedom uh, movement groups just pop up like wildfire where um focusing on different different elements you're, you're seeing freedom groups pop in pop up in individual towns that are worrying about you know just uh, issues with each individual town all over ontario and so yeah so, so it's, it's growing and it, and it will continue to grow and i just feel like you can't press truth morality and the human spirit for long enough it, i feel like it's like as soon as you suppress a truth i feel that it just builds up an energetic pressure like a like a pressure cooker and the longer it stays suppressed the more pressure it builds up and eventually something has to i i really do feel that this is what's happening now and you know it's 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 frustrating in canada i'm sure it's frustrating everywhere but yeah lots of lots of places are, are doing a lot better than than we are here um if i'm not mistaken texas is doing really well uh florida i think is doing really well yeah, say yeah really well i don't yeah. oh, sorry. <laughs> well yeah 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 i mean they're yeah really well they're uh they're re there's resistance <laughs> there's some yeah resistance yes and yes. they're uh yes you know there's forces that are trying to fight against the 
uh, just just the mandates and and all this stuff mm-hmm. and uh, and you know Ohio's better than a lot of places as far as okay just recent recently, uh, but but then you get the mixed bag of where there's if there's national or international companies that have already put those mandates and those systems in the place, then they just keep them going. And so, Mm -hmm. and that was almost like, that was part of the plan where it's like, okay, a lot of these grocery stores and and wherever they, they already have all this stuff. They get rid of the mandate and where they don't feel like they, because that's still, these are illegal mandates anyway. But uh, even if you believed in them, they, they take them away, but then the companies don't change because they already built it. It's e- it's easier to just keep it, keep the, keep the face mask sign and just, just keep everybody, you know, just as opposed to like, no, there's no, there's nothing right now. There's no mandate for that. And, and, and but there's still places that are trying to tell you, Oh, you need this. And then yeah. you get this private companies that try to have the, uh, the passport idea or this like you have to show your papers before you can come in and the funnier the craziest ones are these like pizza places and places where it's okay before i can come in and eat this big plate of pus i have to show you a a card that i got this poison and i'm in the club i'm in the poison the club now i can come in i mean it's it's absolutely ridiculous but yeah. at least yeah. it's it's here. It's there, there's that that kind of force that that you're seeing in place in California and New York and that that kind of real kind of totalitarian tire tire you know tyranny going on mm-hmm. there is uh, it's not yeah. it's not like that you know here. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, in Florida it seems like it, that's kind of the the. Uh, the safe haven now <laughs> you know, right 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 yeah. right yeah and you know it's what's what's really amazing about this is for the first time as far as i as far as i know in human history th- these people are getting incentivized right through coercion through duress mm-hmm. through a state of duress get to get um death poke for 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 not because they're concerned about any particular health related immunity, but purely for economic reasons and political reasons, so that right. they can travel, so that they can, so that so that they can work, so that they can. Be, it's like, hello, what? Why would you? Why would you be getting this death poke for any other reason than being concerned about immunity, right? But nobody. Right. I, 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 I barely know anybody who has who has succumbed to that pressure, who did right. it because they were worried about immunity. They've all done it for political reasons. Now, if that yeah. doesn't scream at you that something is wrong, I mm, I, I don't right. know what to tell you. You know? It's, it, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, this is definitely this is, this is coercion. Yeah, it's social. En- you're seeing social engineering. You're seeing social manipulation. You're seeing population control. You're seeing, um, you're seeing an out of control lust to control every single living thing from the top down by by uh, a maniacal uh, uh, oligarchy. Uh, yeah, you know, an elitist, an elitist yeah. clique yeah. that has been in control for a long time. Yep, yep. I mean, it's they they're just rolling it out. I mean, you can. Um, because everything that's happening, we we've all been saying this to say for a while, and those in the early videos, they, people get mad at us because they're like, "No, it's not going to be that bad," and we're like, "No, it's it's going to be that bad. It's going to be worse because people are are, <laughs> are too slow on the draw." It's like because uh... way back when I was like, they show up with a gun in one hand and a syringe in the other, and people thought <laughs> that I was just saying that like that I was just being hyperbolic. And I'm like, no, and that's, that's happening. Maybe not in your yeah. state yet or your country, but there's, yeah, there's places yeah. where that's happening. Go to India, go to Argentina, go to well, yeah. Thailand. You know, there's a number know. of places. And uh, yeah. now Austria, they, 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 they're like, everybody has to get it. I think Thailand did that a while ago. And then now Austria, uh, yeah. compl- you know, 
for the whole whole population. You you had to get it, or it's going to be a four thousand dollar fine. Eventually, yeah. they'll just arrest you, and then they'll get once you're in custody, they'll give it to you anyway. And uh, but then the other thing we predicted would be the uh, uh, that that they're going to come up with all. The, uh, there's going to be a variant, a new variant every couple months. We'll get you know Delta yes, Phi right. Delta and Alpha Phi Alpha that's Kappa right. variant. Like we're going to get all the variants. And they just announced yeah. some, some now. You know they're trying to fear monger on some new, new variant, and new variant. Yeah, like, always. You know, it's not. It's not going to end. You know until we end. end. <laughs> yeah, like guys, it, 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 and it was never intended to. They 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 told you, oh, we right. have to wait for we have to wait for a treatment before we can get back to yeah. normal. Two no, weeks, no, 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 just no. two guys, weeks. That's this it. is yeah, two weeks to flatten the curve. This has been mm-hmm. this is calculated years and you oh and it, it's so funny because in terms of in terms of how uh a virus acts in in, in the body right how and I, I put up a lecture on this on my channel if you guys are interested in how how viruses and bacteria actually work then um my my it, it, there's a series that i put up called viruses and bacteria are normal natural and necessary you can head out head over to the free melon society you can check it out so I don't want to describe everything that uh, that I've said in the lecture there, but in terms of variants and and mutations, okay, the, the the type and character and color of the virus of the viruses that are produced by your own body, these will this will change and fluctuate like every seventy two hours. You'll you'll always be producing a different viral strain because you your your the the viruses that you produce. Are going to respond to the very particular character of internal chemistry that's in your body at that time, and so it's like it's this beautiful fluctuation where you're always adjusting to internal uh, uh, conditions, which always change because you're always doing something differently. You're always eating something differently. You're always you have different um, uh, thoughts and emotions at a different time, and this always changes. So um, uh, I've seen. Oh, 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 thanks, Vadim. Yeah, I'm, glad, I'm great. I'm glad you, I'm glad you liked it. Yeah, thank you. And yeah, so there's all you, the point is, what I'm trying to make is that in attacking variants, they understand very well that they are attacking something to which there is no end. They, they're very right. intelligent. <laughs> they know this and they know yeah. that they can just continue the war indefinitely for yeah. freaking ever if they yeah. attack this phenomenon of variation because they know that there is no end to variation in yeah. in in the way viruses work in biological life forms they know this so you yeah. know they're pulling you along for a very stupid ride <laughs> yep stupid it's like ride. look at so already they got the U- u.s announces travel restrictions over the new covid19 variant so they are oh, on it. Christ. We got Fauci up here, and uh, and then they, and they don't even know what it is yet, but they're already, mm. you know, mm. they're saying we're mm. we're working with the U.S. and global public health and industry partners to learn more about this variant as we continue to monitor its path. <laughs> it's so uh, they name this it's one so Om- Omnicron. Omnicron. <laughs> <laughs> so so it, it like. Omnicron, come on, man. This like, is like something yeah. out of Transformers or something like Omnicron. Yeah. I mean, guys, you know, we, we, we've got to be, we've got to know how, how this type of manipulation works. Just like there's a general yeah. set of formula that they always use and they'll always go to and they don't, they never change it. It's, it's always, they really dig. And when I say they, I mean, social engineers. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, population manipulators. Okay. When, that's what I mean when I say they get all of that's just a whole different subject but right they always they they prefer enemies that you can't actually identify right mm-hmm. because it makes it it makes it much more difficult for the public to um to respond and it 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 it, it forces them to who how does it it forces them to put their all their faith in the academic community, in the scientists, mm-hmm. in the people that quote know better, right? So right. Th- this is why they like things like climate change, 
right? Climate change, right? This is this mm. is the, the big problem. This is the enemy that um, is that is going to destroy humanity. So what's the solution? Well, sh- you know, throw all your money at government. That's the solution, right? Uh, right. Tax you up the wazoo for you know carbon, because car- uh, uh, CO two is the, is the enemy. Something that has oh my, oh my god, they actually label CO two as an as an enemy. CO two is one of the most important and integral uh, um, elements to life. You you can't even imagine how important CO two is to you know to the atmosphere. For them to convince you that CO2 is the enemy, I, I mean, what would they convince you of next? Like they're, they're going to go after oxygen, right? Oh, my God, oxygen is the new pollutant. I mean, if they can convince you of CO2 is the enemy, they can convince you anything's the enemy. But the yeah. thing is, they always pick well, it's always enemy. yeah, yeah, like well, like the the war, the 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 war on drugs, the war on terror, the war on drugs, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's 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 always it's it's always going to be. Some sort of object of fear, right? Oh, terrorism. Well, they used that one for for a while until until this crap came along, and they're like, yeah, you mm-hmm. know what, the terrorism thing. Yeah, ah, like, we're done with that. Yeah. Let's yeah, let's focus on something else. Right. You know, always, always. Yeah. Yep. I mean, yeah. it's. <laughs> I mean, you can pretty much just you know the script. You know what they're gonna do, and you can just. Mm-hmm uh you know you, you can just really you know just just as they say and then yeah we got to show the because i guess they're they're restricting from south from south uh, africa i guess is where this mm-hmm. is supposed to be coming from oh okay okay but moderna i i, yeah. I heard um i heard a conversation with moderna and uh someone who was recording just an information session with them and mm-hmm. yeah you know moderna Moderna full on admitted that the current experiment, uh, the current trials, the the, the current uh, experiment trials, are 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 what's going on right now. Is the public release of Mo- of Moderna's um, fatality inducing pokey pokes, right? The the current release is the human trials. This is flagrantly right. illegal. Yeah. Okay. This is this is this is absolutely illegal. You are not allowed to do this, <laughs> but they are doing it. They're doing it. Yep. You know, and they admit it. They they full on admit it. Like, yeah, these are the trials. We don't really know exactly what's going to happen. That's why we're. That's why um, we, we've we've released them in this way. It's like, oh, great. Uh, thanks. Like, what? <laughs> yeah, guys. There's there's so much. I mean, there's so much foul play here. I mean, it, it would it would it beggars belief how anybody is is getting away with it that's i think that's what's really confounding is that yeah. so much is happening everywhere and and the obvious illegality the obvious breach of of human rights is is not being jumped on no uh, and is not being seen is not is not being recognized no. for for what it is and for for people like us it's just it's so bloody obvious like my yeah. goodness yeah it's it, it's it's really interesting but you know this is why these types of conversations are good we kind of just really need to start start saturating the uh you know saturating the plane with conversations like this and and more people will just catch in tune in and you know just really 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 uh feed that that kind of collective energy that is online to the type and nature of threat that we're under because it, it it's it's a critical juncture in human history right now I, I really believe that we're living through a very important time where we can pivot in one direction or pivot in another direction and one will lead to i i don't it's ungodly horrors just ungodly transhumanistic um uh, polluted genes polluted blood horror and you, you yeah. know we, we really don't want to go there guys so like now now is the time it's why it's good to be looking after your own wellness right now if, if you're if you're at all concerned about immunity immunity becomes I, i'm i'm gonna maybe speak out of, out of turn here but it becomes a joke when you're when you're living a very clean raw you know mucus free lifestyle mucus lean lifestyle a transitionary lifestyle right 
your immunity will be the last thing that you need to worry about. Okay. I, yeah. I mean, I, 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 I have, I have, I don't even remember what colds feel like. It's been so long. You, you, you just, you have a very clean functioning system and it's a clean functioning system that is synonymous with immunity, right? The, the two are, they're, they're, they're linked and you just, it, it's just not stuff that you have to worry about. What you have to worry about is getting poison. Okay. I'm not going to, you know, if you, if you just drink a gasoline or if you, if you take in, take in, um, mercury fumes or not. Yeah. Okay. You might want to worry about that, but it's, it's not that, um, you know, it's, it's not that, uh, you have to worry about viruses and bacteria and pathogens. No, no, this is not. This is not how disease works. Right? Disease works because you 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 dirty yourself up from the side out. So you take care of that battle, right? And you know you're you do not have to worry about walking around people. Like, give me a break. We've been doing this since we were on the planet. Yeah, and this is uh, <clears throat> ears. Uh, I always think about this when we get into these type of discussions, but. Uh, part out of rational fasting where Eric says, uh, mm -hmm. look at it from a philosophical standpoint, this interpretation differ, uh, uh, differs from the medieval superstition and the period of fetishism only in the uh, supplemental name. Formerly, it was an evil spirit, which imagination yes. went so far as to believe in satanic personages. Now this uh, same dangerous monster is a microscopically vi visible being whose ex existence has been proven beyond any doubt. And he's talking about the, the microbes, the viruses, the, 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 these are, these became the new boogie, uh, boogie men yes. and women. I guess you had to say men and yes. women. Yes. Um, yeah. I mean, this is, he just nailed, he just, you know, Eric's just bad dude. Perfect. You know, he nailed, nailed all this. And, uh, oh yeah, it was perfect. Yeah. I, I <laughs> there's so many parts in, in, uh, in Aaron's book where, you know, you're just reading it and you just smile. So I just feel like, Oh, this guy is laying it to yeah. the conventional theory. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Just cause he, well, and then there's, he doesn't, it's not, I don't think it's in uh, rational fasting. It's uh, maybe uh, uh tragedy and nutrition. He mentions it and he talks about mm -hmm. it in some other more obscure writings of his where he he used to forcibly try to get give himself diseases yeah. and vi well yeah. viruses so he would he gave himself a, a malaria <laughs> and he ba he went through an elimination for two days and yeah. and and just fasted flushed it out of his system and that was it and mm -hmm. and he he got to a point where it became impossible for him to get whatever he was trying yeah. to put himself around he was trying to get himself infected and it it wasn't it wasn't happening and, and it wasn't happening yeah you know it's, yeah uh, it, 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 some, it, some it, of your, no go ahead oh no, no okay okay i was gonna say some of your viewers are probably familiar with uh wim hof uh, the, mm -hmm. uh, the ice man right yes you guys are all yeah. familiar with him and he he did the same thing he went into a lab and um you know injected himself with you know with pathogens and viruses mm -hmm. or, or whatever just to prove that he, he couldn't get sick and it's just and people watch it and and in awe and wow but what i want to what i want to get across is that that's not it's not a fantastic thing right, right. that's a very normal thing because if you, because these bacteria and these viruses these are not these are not what cause disease the world wants to convince you that that's the but it's not the cause and so anybody who is in a, in a state of good, clean health, anybody can, can come into contact with bacteria and viruses and, and have absolutely no reaction, right? I've been, I've, I've been in dense, thick crowds every single weekend for, you know, since last year. <laughs> I mean, if anybody should be, should be sick, you know, it, 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 but that's just not how it works. It's, it's not, not how out. life, it, yeah. It's not how life insulates you from from sickness and disease. That has to be internally generated. It's a result of your own decision making, or, whether unconscious or not. Maybe it's environmental, uh, an environmental pollution or a, a poison that's in the air uh, that's coming from the from the from fumes or whatever. So, 
but the, the point is, it's always poisons and toxins that you have to safeguard yourself from, not from not from life, not from bacteria and right. viruses and like agents of life. These, these things are not a concern. Right. Oh, here's here's another good one <clears throat> in the uh, in the uh, lesson six, new physiology, medical physiology, pathological physiology continues to find disease that is the cause of disease with the microscope and germ theory is now fashionable. And this is 1920, <laughs> still quite fashionable today. Uh, they yeah, will never God. find the truth and never understand what disease is as long as they have a fundamentally wrong conception of blood circulation and just disease in general. Um, they, of course, perfect, you know, perfect. It's just, just as applicable then as now as it will be in 100 years from now. You know that's 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 truth for you it it just it it never ceases to be relevant mm -hmm. never yeah it, yeah it's and 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 what gets frustrating <laughs> for us is it's so it's so simple you know it's like it's so we, simple. Don't, we don't have to go through there's so much pain and suffering that is unnecessary mm -hmm. and it would just just that raise a consciousness and then action because people can know all there's a lot of people that know this stuff and don't do it and don't take right. action you got to take action but there's just <laughs> you know i don't and that's why i show a lot of uh, images of kind of disease and nasty things to in pathology not to gross people out but to try to show you like this is the path that 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 you might be on and you don't have to yes. be on. You don't have to. It's not yes. a genetic predetermination that you have to get that disease. You have to go through yeah. that pain and that suffering. You can make the changes to uh, uh, to avoid that, to go just just yeah. totally change the path. Yeah. If, if you and if, if we scare ourselves, we should know that it was discovered a while ago that children as young as ooh, 13 13, 14, already at that age, have the mm. beginnings of ather atherosclerosis in their arteries already. Mm. Yeah. It, it, young, we're talking young kids. Now, the only the only reason why they would get heart disease in the future is because it's been accruing and building up since the time they were young. And they've done they've done studies right. on this. They've done the yep. cadaver analysis on children that die. And so, so what is that they're getting that because they're just on the planet as it turns and goes around no that has nothing to do with it no it's what is being put in the body and the body is magic but it's not completely magic so you right. will always be <laughs> responsible you it's it's always you it's it's your call right unless you're being un, unwittingly poisoned from a, some other source i get that yes but but the yeah. point is it's yeah it's an onboarding of uh, of bad choices of, of, of toxic material mucus forming material that your body cannot cope with very well um routinely over time and yeah and so we're seeing this in these kids is like oh my god these are adult diseases preparing themselves to be sick in the future and so yeah. and it's not necessary like you're saying it's not necessary you can yeah. avoid it you know I mean, I, I always look now. at the, the that babe the baby formula when you look at the ingredients of this stuff that oh, no. you, you're supposed oh, no. to give your child. It's like they no, they are they have mastered the ability to transition babies into this diet, into the pus and mucus <laughs> way of life. Cause even a baby has to you have to transition from essentially a liquid Aryan when you, you've not eaten <laughs> solid food yet when you're born. And yeah, you yeah. Transition. Yeah. But it's it's so if you're just transitioning with just human breast milk and uh, and, and some uh, and, and those of us that are on this path, we can make some some little things, some concoctions that are uh, that are perfectly fine. Uh, but what the average person, the average unfortunate child has to <laughs> is get these uh, <laughs> uh, this nasty stuff, which is, is like way protein is one of the top ingredients yeah. and there's wheat in it and oh. sugar and corn syrup and it's like oh this is healthy this is what you want to give your baby and people wonder Jeez. why what you're talking about 
by when you're yeah. I mean, and then just being sick seven or eight, nine years old, you know, diff, just different levels of sickness. And I know mm-hmm. how sick I was growing up and it's getting worse and worse. And we're seeing folks are dying at just a younger and younger and younger age. It's it's because mm-hmm. now, I mean, people are dying in their 40s and 50s, they're getting strokes and heart attacks. And folks are like, I thought, yeah. man, they, did, they didn't look, they weren't fat. They, they thought they were pretty healthy. And it's like, no, it's not, that's not what it's about. And that's so, right. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. The, the world, the world is not going to support your decision to take your life and health and wellness to the next level. The world will not be there to support you. Right. There are elements of no. the world that you can that <laughs> yes. support you. But it, the, the, the conventional. World, so, you know, it's it's not there for you guys. I, I, no. I remember. Oh, God, I, I think I was in a grocery store and I was I was so, so shocked. I like. I, I think I looked at package and went like, I yelled like, "No!" It was I picked up a, a, a it was this package of candy, children's. Mm. Candy. The stuff the stuff was actually called and and I might be getting the title wrong, but it was actually called something to the effect of toxic waste, or 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 nuclear waste or something. Yeah, like it was yeah. literally ex- so. I then I was just shocked. I'm looking at it and on the cover is like kids with their skin melting and whatnot and, and i'm like no they're actually just telling you how it is i look on the back to see what the ingredients are uh, sure enough it li- literally literally <laughs> was toxic waste petroleum yeah. products and yeah. msg and all i'm like you've got to be i was i was in shock like i was in shock you know Anyway, that's the world. That that's the that's yeah. where that's where we're at, guys. <laughs> that's what that's what yeah. you got to deal with when you want to go and eat your up. you know bananas and salad, right? <laughs> yeah, because that's because that's even a, if you do the Google toxic waste candy banned. So I guess they banned it somewhere. It's like ha- hazardously sour. <laughs> Oh, look at with, this. With, with with artificial flavors there. Wait, 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 oh, why why would they be sugar corn? Yeah, sure, yeah, natural. Really, yeah, this is yeah, sugar corn syrup, sugar and corn syrup. You get both of them. Uh, yeah, citric right. acid, malic acid, dextrose, artificial flavors, which is like, you know, beaver. What was that? Uh, those weird weird stuff that they make that stuff from beeswax artificial color <laughs> yeah this is a uh, real this is really something i want to give give my child yeah I think this is so this is industry it. runoff these are these are just byproducts of of insane chemists like, this right. is not you know this is not and i and i'm sure most of your your viewers know this already like I'm, right. this isn't going to be a surprise to anybody but it's just just so we're making it clear that just because this is an obvious case of, of, of dietary nonsense, that's an obvious case. But it's, yeah. it's just that the rest of the spectrum, is it's just as silly, but not as obvious. But it's, you know, very much just as damaging. Uh, you got good luck going to your average conventional restaurant where you're not going to be getting food that that stifles you <laughs> that that clogs up your you know clogs up the the pathways it's it's everywhere it's everywhere yeah. so this know. is ridiculous you I, go, I oh, what this. good what lord this? what the hell is this cat butt <laughs> gum <laughs> no <laughs> stop it like, like who do you <laughs> like, how do you no. even come up with that idea like this is eight pieces of kiss my ass attitude <laughs> no stop that's not no no company is putting this out there. I don't oh, believe you. Man. It's right in front of my face, and I don't believe you. Yeah, I, I, I feel like uh, they, they really get off on just seeing how, how much, how insulting they can be to your to the general yeah. public's intelligence, and still get away with it, right? Yeah, yeah. They must and just that be whole, cackling uh, behind the desk. You know? Well, and, <laughs> Sorry, and what makes me think? Well, I grew up with the. Uh... Ren and Stimpy show that was like you know that you started yeah. to see the gr- the gross out cartoons yeah started yeah, yeah, to, yeah. you know started to develop and it was like yeah Ren and Stimpy and this is like that type of I mean I can imagine what they're watching now I don't know what I don't know what's out there now that's, that's <laughs> like that but uh 
but yeah, this kind of gross out humor for really young people. That was yeah. uh yeah, and yeah. then yeah. now you want to you want to eat it, you want to eat eat the toxic waste and uh well the the poop emoji is probably one of the most popular <laughs> emojis <laughs> that's that's out there and <laughs> like we saw uh, uh was walking around at a mall years ago with brother air and they, they had like these sold like poop emoji backpacks and wallets and yeah it's uh yeah. It's, it's bizarre it's, as we say bizarro world it is bizarro world yeah it's it's like a it's like a filth and death obsessed culture for for, for whatever reason right and right. yeah i mean look you know, look look at look at look at it you just look at it uh, it's overwhelming, or you know, overwhelming. You know, the, the problems and the the misconceptions and the, and the delusions and the, the conditioning, the social conditioning that goes on with all of these industries, all of them. Right. And you, you just you you pull it all together, and and basically what you're getting is you're getting this collective environment that is just seems seems like it's doing everything in its power to divorce you from all that is true good moral and healthy and it, it, from every direction you will be yeah. assailed right when you when you embark on a path where you're trying to do the best for yourself and your family your children from every direction every conceivable direction you will you will be getting misleading information you will be you things will try to deceive you and you got to be ready for that you, you've got to be ready for that you got to be you know do do the best you can to inform yourself on how this game works, how the health game works. You, you've got nothing without your health, okay? Right. This is why I, I tend to focus on it. You have absolutely nothing with your, without your health. Have you ever, you know, for the, 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 for the bodybuilders out there, the fitness guys, the fitness athletes out there, do you remember the last time you had a, a bad flu? All that fitness, it meant nothing when you were bedridden. Mm -hmm. It meant nothing. Right? right, it doesn't matter. Your your amazing car, the 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 home, the home in the Bahamas or whatever. That when you have don't have your health, that stuff means crap, right? So yep. you you have to take care of your health primarily, and then you can enjoy all of the other things in life. But if you don't have that foundation built, you know you're you're setting yourself up for disaster. No matter what else that's good and beneficial is going on in your life. You know, you you, you can't enjoy yeah. your family when when you don't have your health, right? It's just yeah. So, no better time than now, guys. Yeah, yeah. This is def this is definitely the time. This is because this is definitely a war, uh, a, a war on healthy people. <laughs> it said, oh yeah, they're, they're wanting you to comply. You know, bend over, get the experiment, be be part of the experiment. That's it's all this. Mm -hmm propaganda it's like just come join us join the experiment it's like no nah, yeah good. yeah yeah it's fun i'm i'm laughing it's funny but it's like <laughs> well yeah it's, like it's so laugh, ridiculous laugh it's so from, absurd yeah yeah <laughs> yeah yeah we have to do a lot of that on this but laugh to keep from crying because it's just so uh, right pathetic. Yeah, uh, yeah, I feel, yeah. I feel yeah. <laughs> and, uh, I know, I so, know. well, it's been uh, it's been great having you here on the program, and oh, uh, you have uh, have some some final uh, final thoughts for the the our uh, community here. Well, you guys, you guys are in the right place. You're you're listening to the right podcast. If you're tuning into this podcast or anything of the same ilk then you know you've uh, you're you're trotting the correct path right you need to well i say need but if you're so inclined then both of us would highly recommend that you take an investment into your future into yourself into your own into your own god-given spirituality and and lay the foundation for what will be a very rewarding life for you in the present and in, and in the future and the way you do that is that you avoid the contraptions and the delusions of culture right take after what is as best you can 
take after take care of what is going into your body right the air you the air you breathe the water you drink and the foods you eat okay recognize this recognize your own human sensitivities okay test them out if you want um i, I i'm i'm a very very i'm very very keen on suggesting that if people want to really really examine if something is good for them then take it in isolation and test it in its, in its natural state um you know like like salts and seasonings and peppers and whatnot you think those things are doing you a service okay great grab Grab a bowl full of pepper and eat it. See what happens. <laughs> Na it, nature's intelligence will completely take over. You're going to vomit all over your kitchen. And you're going to realize pepper is not food for, for humans. Right? And, it, and, and there's no ambiguity about this. You need no science. You need no experts misleading you. Right? You can sprinkle li a little bit of pepper on your food. Yeah. But, um, you know, <laughs> I don't want to go off on a tangent here. But, uh, you know, a little bit of poison is just a little bit of poison. And a lot is a lot. So um, anyhow, you treat your body well. Recognize these, recognize the signs and, the, and you know, that, that nature gives you by virtue of your senses and your sensitivities to and your affinities to different foods. And that serves as it's this kind of unmistakable radar to guide you to the, to the, to the proper things that construct um, a good human system, all right? And pay attention to that. You're in the right spot. You know, keep keep listening to podcasts like these and uh, and have fun with it. You know, have fun with it. When you discover this new opportunity to bring the best out of your life, then don't approach it with stress. Don't approach it with worry. Don't approach it with guilt. Approach it as something fun that you and exciting that you're going to embark on and you you'll be setting yourself up for success in the future so um, i guess yeah I, that's what i'd have to i'd have to say in, in conclusion and thank you so much thank you so much everyone for for joining us here uh thank you so much professor spiro for having me and uh letting me take part in this amazing discussion and uh I, you know it, it really warms my heart to be able to share this information with like-minded individuals and get this out into the you know into the into the public uh, because, man, like we were saying, no, no better time than now. You know? Yeah, yeah, this is an emergency. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you gotta yeah. go. And I wanted to read this is uh, uh, my man Reese said. I remember seeing an old video Eli made years ago. He dropped a photo of the annotated edition of the Mucus Die Healing System, and that's how I got into it. Uh, thanks, yeah, Professor Spira. And uh, yeah, you, Reese. He, uh, yeah, Reese, and, uh, Reese great. in yeah, the. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, the, the research and development team, the mu mucus free yeah. uh, life research and development team. And uh, yeah, he Amazing. told me that. That's how he, that's how he you do found, these, found us. You're awesome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, uh, and I want to thank every everybody that uh, we had. Uh, yeah, Steve was on the uh, yeah, Juice Guru Institute. Everybody that did uh, the super sticker. Thanks, Lawrence, for, for that. We got uh sherry likes fruit thank you so much sherry, sherry. And, uh, steve prusek with the uh, juice guru institute appreciate that and i appreciate everybody for thank you so much guys thank you for being on thank here you. and uh yeah it's been been a lot of a lot of fun uh yeah getting a chance to finally really uh, sit down and rap with you yeah and, yeah. Uh, yeah yeah and everybody yeah check out uh, Eli's uh, 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 YouTube channel, free the Free Melon Society, right there, and uh, yeah, link oh, thank to, you so much to that down down below. And uh, yeah, we this is important work that we're doing to be out here just sharing, you know, to have have yeah. the courage to share this information because, like like you said, a lot of a lot of people don't take too kindly to uh, <laughs> to, what, to what we're sharing or what we're <laughs> The way we're yeah. trying to live they want to try to protect their they're like oh they're trying to protect their little way of life and because they've yeah. invested so much into that they just invested yes. a lot into that 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 society the the, yes. the hierarchy the way and i know you see a lot of the bad behind the scenes of your job i'm sure there's yeah. some of that, that you see just yeah there's such an investment and when something comes along that challenges that 
then people freak out. They're like, wait a minute. Oh, yeah. hey, no, I don't want, I don't even want to hear about that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. And, you know, I, yeah, we've, we've all been, we've all been through that. And I, I, and just so you guys know, I mean, when I, when I started coming online to this, I, I had to be personally insulted. Like I had to be, I, I, I was pretty insulted and, of, and offended almost um, because of what I was reading and it, cause it didn't square my reality. And I, I, you know, I had that cognitive dissonance and yeah, I, I, I had to be a little bit offended and insulted at first, but you know what? Truth doesn't really care about your feelings. And the, the sooner that you can align right. with truth in whatever capacity, the quality of your life just picks up. Right? Most definitely. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, man, I appreciate you being on here. And uh, one last time I'm a, but my uh, my my band, that's my uh, uh, my band website there. Check check us out, and uh, and uh, so yeah, and keep on tuning in. We're gonna keep on trying to you know, bring some some quality content here every week. Been uh, you know get getting awesome. things moving. Got a lot of activities that we're planning on doing in the future. So just uh, stay tuned and. Uh, and yeah, as Vadim said, the truth will set you free. And uh, that's most that it will. Time. That it will, my friend. <laughs> <laughs>